today since October 2018 after coronavirus cases in the country surged past 800 in Italy. The main market index was down more than 4% in early trading after the number of cases there topped 150 and authorities started shutting down schools and museums in parts of the country. U.S. stocks poised to open sharply lower. Dow futures down more than 800 points or more than 2.7%. S&P 500 futures declined 2.7%.
These are all comets. I blew them up. You want me to highlight some of them, or? Yeah. It's ready time. I'm living my best life. Time. Wake up, Chicago! Wake up, world! This is the WVOA Morning Show. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my clothes. Oh, I did that wrong. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my clothes. Todd Stroger. Todd, how you feeling this morning? Good. You did something wrong? I did it. I said, Mage Jackson. <laughs> See, I did the promo for the intro instead of the intro for the promo. Ah. You see what I'm saying? I'm your host, Mage Jackson. You, you know what? I'm all confused, yeah. but you know what? It's all good because it's gonna be a great day, man. It is it, a it big, is. it is a big show, a big get tied yes, uh, I need today. A little, little wait, and I'm starting already. <laughs> sweat it out. They got the sweat. Out. They got the heat. You know what, man? But speaking of the heat, we are bringing the heat today. We at seven o'clock, man. We're gonna take a lot of white folks off. A lot of white people are mad at this. You know what? You know what? This this is almost appropriate, like an ice cube. This is the Blagojevich they love to hate, man. This is the white guy they love to hate. Uh, Governor, you know, I, I don't know. I have to say, I was surprised on my Facebook page. Well, I was looking at some other person's page. There's some black people who are like, "Good, I'm glad he spent a lot of time in jail." Uh, the, you know what? It's a few, and it's like those are the contrarians. Nah. Right. If you pay attention to the people who are saying that on the black side, it's like they the black people that if all the black people go in this way, they're going to be like, let me swim upstream. <laughs> right. But I'm going to tell you what, regardless of how you feel about it, he will be here in the studio on Facebook. Now, I'm going to tell you what, if you don't have a Facebook live account, this is when you probably want to get one, because I'm telling you, I have prepared the questions for the off air just as well as I prepare the questions for on air. So right here in the studio, um, Rob, Governor, former Gov Illinois Governor Rob Goyevich will be in the studio. Uh, you can best believe people will be tuned in. Yeah. All right, let's do this. Back in the building, did she, did she, you know what? She walked in the studio this morning. I was like, what you doing here? You know, yeah. I didn't even, I didn't even be like, hey, how you doing? What you doing here? I thought you was back in the studio with us is Miss Samantha Thomas. Samantha, how you doing? I am good, Mace. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. Okay. Like Tony the Tiger, man. Hey, you, have you seen they brought Tony the Tiger back with I'm Great yeah, commercials? Yeah. And it's like, now it's like, I'm great. And it's like, no, the, no, no. is it on TV? I don't know. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> hush, millennial. Hush, hush, millennial. They don't have that on Hulu and Netflix. All right, and that voice you hear in the background is the musical conductor of the soul playing Miss Sonia Escobar. Sonia Escobar, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling pumped, guys. Pump, pump, pump. You up? Remember? Remember when they were like, we're here to pump, pump you up? Yeah. You gotta find that on Sunday. That's why you got. That's that's what YouTube is for. See. No, we are here to. We are here to pump you up. Right, right, right. All right. Well. Oh, okay. I got you. I, I we see you. I see. You. All right. Look, y'all. We getting on the spot updates. Uh, look. You know they. Well, first of all, that is Miss. Sonya Escobar, she's the music conductor of the Soul Plane. Let's get this thing. Well, that means we are all locked and loaded. So let's get this thing up to 50,000 feet. It is the WVON Morning Show. Now, don't get too high because we got to bring this bad boy back down. Because, uh, again, don't forget, we got Governor Bogoyevich coming on. Am I allowed? Are you supposed to call him Governor? Can you still? You know, I was wondering if they were going to call him Governor Bogoyevich because the. Governor, the yeah, but see, did they take his picture down? I feel like they took his picture down and everything. Jeez. You know they was they was gangster with Todd. Did you ever get your picture up? I did. One day I was uh, walking by and they were like, "Oh, you got a picture up?" Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they didn't say, "Here's your unveiling ceremony." They didn't give you like the big shebang. No, no. Somebody said, "Hey, your picture's up." I'm like, oh, okay. Wait, you know what? That's Tony Preckwinkle, man. I think this is what I'm gonna do, Todd. Today, you know what? One of these days, hey, you yeah. remember in uh, the Ten Commandments mm -hmm. when Moses was being kicked out and. They went through this whole big ceremony. And he about, was like, you will never, your names will be written, erased from the walls. Yeah, I think one of those for me. They were like, your mama and your daddy will never. Yeah. Doom. Yeah. We will erase the fact that you were ever in existence. Doom. You are I now. That was the white progressive, uh, they had a ceremony, yes. Well, what are any black participants? What about the black people? You know, they the, in the back the black people Swing low. You know. Hey, what? Lame. You know what? Somebody got to start the fight. Hey, man. I, you know, I'm starting the fight. Todd, see, man, you should hire me as your swordsman. Well, you can't hire me as your swordsman now because I actually, like, I'm like a, you know, I've increased in rank. But, man, if I was your yeah, swordsman, man, I, what, yeah. See, if I was your swordsman, though, man, I would have been chopping heads. I would have been telling you. Yeah. Like, right, like, you know, we could have made Tony Preckwinkle uh, have a ceremony for you when she was trying to be the mayor. Remember when she came back? Uh -huh. We should be like, how bad you want to be? First, yeah. you got you to gotta kiss the ring. Yeah. You got to come over to Ty's house and cook them. <laughs> Could you see? What do you think she cooks? Uh, steamed rice. <laughs> I'm like, you know, with no seasoning. With no <laughs> like, season. she don't do, she uh -huh. ain't, you know, she ain't in the sugar and butter. She ain't in the salt debate. She be yeah, like, just man. give me the white rice. Are you trying to tell me you think that Tony Pratt puts raisins in her uh, potato salad? She'll out? be here in about two weeks. <laughs> we'll ask her. You what does she her. cook? She'll be like, broccoli. <laughs> no salt. <laughs> yeah, broccoli. You make some broccoli. <laughs> All right, it is the WVOA Morning Show. Uh, y'all, we are having a great day. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Man! Okay, Todd, I did have a fight. Shindig. Um, it wasn't a fight party. It was just a reunion of the, like, the fellas. Uh, I haven't seen, like, I haven't hung out with my friend. Because, you know, like... It's like I don't hang out with my friends anymore because our clocks are so different. And so that. I tried to hang out with everybody. And it was like like where we usually would just be getting started. Like once the fight was over, I went and got my chair. And the next thing, Carrie was like, you were snoring. And everybody was like, okay, well, <laughs> I guess right. that's the end of the pot. But how about that fight, man? Did you see it? Uh, no, I, I don't watch boxing anymore. Uh, you know what? I was excited because it was going to be a battle of the heavyweights. And it was just like... You know what that fight reminded me of? It reminded me of like when Bolingbrook High School played City School. It's like the City Schools had like the high skill athletes, uh -huh. right? That was like talented and they could get over on pure talent. Right. But if it came down to crunch time and you had to rely on fundamentals, they, whoop, they didn't, know what, they didn't know what to do, right? Like you could get them to jump off sides. You could, Deontay Wilder had a right hand and that is it. So if he couldn't hit you with that right hand, it man, and it was like I. Yeah, but y'all, black people are terrible. Because it was like, they shouldn't have had this fight in Black History Month. They was like, man, he licked his blood during the fight. Um, and then it was like, he, um, they, man, but you know, they said Deontay Wilder let the race down. 
<laughs> it was like I was like, but that should just tell. First of all, I do need to tell what black people. Nineteen hundred. Okay, but I'm gonna tell you what. You know, this reminds me of that Rocky skit that um Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy did. Yeah. <laughs> right. He was like, you know, you tried. To, he was like, he was talking smack, and the white boy was t- man. <laughs> Todd, I just need to tell all the black people be on the lookout for the white guys. Because the white guys are going to be walking around feeling real tough this week. <laughs> they are. I'm telling you. Man, it used to be like that. Well, see, it wasn't like that in high school. Because every time, you know, after Mike Tyson fight when I was in high school. Remember Mike Tyson used to fight like once a month on HBO? Yeah. He'd be like once a month. And every time. No, and do not go get any popcorn. Right. And remember, though, all the white guys would be feeling all. It would be like they would peak in Valley. It would be like they would. All month after the Mike Tyson fight. They'll be chill, then they start building up. Then Michael whoop somebody. They be like, "Let me chill." No. <laughs> now I'm telling you, this is go in the era of Trump. I mean, I'm telling you, Tyson Fury is gonna be like the. Did, did anybody watch? Uh, I was watching this movie on um, Netflix. Uh, I can't think about it, but I was just thinking about like, can you imagine like all the prisoners? Watching that fight, like the Aryans was probably like, "Yes!" Oh, <laughs> I can't remember what movie. Uh, Shot Caller. I was watching Shot Caller with Jamie Lannister on um, Netflix this weekend, and it made me think of that. Hey man, it's the WVOA Morning Show. I got so much to talk about. Hey, I'm getting real time updates. Uh, my man Mark Vargas says Rod is getting dressed right now, preparing to jump in the car. You think you'll be late? We'll find out. It's Talk Chicago 1690. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up on the Talk of Chicago. All right, I left my Dunkin' Donuts cup in the refrigerator with water, which was a mistake. The water's still there. The cup is gone. I'm not leaving. Well, they blocking us today, y'all. They do not want us to have, they don't want us to be great. Is what lie? Everybody, go be Rob Bogoyevich's paid Facebook friend. What? Your viewers have a lot of good questions. I know. That's why I said. Yeah, I, I thought that it was good to take yeah. their questions and then read their names. With the questions, because they did have good questions. Sometimes I got a block. I got questions I want to know, but I figured it would be good. What's up, y'all? Take a moment. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Tell everybody. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Because coming up, Illinois Governor Rod Blagovet. Okay, y'all. So here's my thing. He used to um, pick on Todd, so I got to make sure he stay straight first. <laughs> All right? So I got you, Todd. I won't let him get you. Like, remember, y'all remember that movie, My Bodyguard? That was a good movie. Man, see, remember My Bodyguard? See, I wouldn't let nobody. I think it's these days I need my own damn bodyguard. How about that? <laughs> you have the power of eyes, several of them, but we just need to knock one out. Easier to knock it out sooner than later. It's the power of your eyeball. Okay, it's fine. Let me settle in. Uh, today, everybody won't be on time and act like um, um famous today. People be wanting to print stuff out and give me papers. And look, look at all this. And I get highlights and stuff. Look at that. Oh, look, I got highlights. They printed my pages out. I still was the first one here. I may not make it this today. I may not make it the whole day. Why? I wore long johns. What a mistake. What the hell? <laughs> Who wears long johns? Still. But it, yeah, but it's Todd, just, you, where it's do, you, do you walk around? Where do you walk? What I mean, under what circumstances do you need long johns? You got to point out. I, I mean, seriously. Unless I walk. Like, are you. City you hall, I don't go anywhere. And, anywhere. and even when you was in City Hall, you didn't walk no damn No, way. I mean, when I walk here in City Hall. Sometimes I'll do that, but. I, but, but when it's but cold out, you know better. Wear. Right. Yeah. Well, you're right. I ain't never wearing these. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously. Who wear. <laughs> I mean, like. I literally got an outfit, I mean a turtleneck, because I just want that for my look on the interview in case oh, the yeah. clips. But, who in the hell wears long johns in this studio? That's what you get. Oh, that's exactly what you get. You get exact, that you, if you do that, you did that to yourself. There's yeah, no. At the, the, the weekend, people had stole my cup, my water cup. I get some water. Water is not going to help you with long johns. Yeah. All right. I guess I shouldn't air the dirty laundry. 
Maybe they call that cleaning out the, uh, no, there's some crap in there. Oh, man. Ugh. Yeah. Good, week. Good weekend. It was nice and warm. Went and saw my peeps at the 21st Ward. Met the new commander. He's not that new. I just haven't been around. Who? Rahman Muhammad? No, I met him some time ago. You know who that is, right? That name is familiar, actually. It, it, is that the commander's first name in six? No, don't, don't. I'm terrible at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be like, oh, I but I met the, the commander of 22 also. Now that Mark Harmon's gone, gone back to the studios. Get up a little more on the dance, dance floor. floor. That's the white people dance. Huh? This is how they used to be like. <laughs> you know the white boys be like <laughs> Make my day Make my day Make. Pump up the jam Pump it up Why your feet are pumping Pump it up Pump it up Pump it up, Pump it up a little more Coming on the dance floor You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, George Soldier Todd. Also, don't forget, today is Monday, so we'll be going to see our friend, Amisha Cross, with our DC update. Is that your sound effects? Look at you. Yeah, yeah. That was my sound effect for a flight. Huh? That's a little better. That That's much better. It's, remember my helicopter? That's pretty good, actually. I am telling you. I wanted to be Michael Winslow at one point. You know, that song makes me think of that uh, that song, Buffalo Stands. Remember that? Oh, Nina Cherry, man. Yeah. That, that song makes me think of the Nina Cherry, Buffalo Dance. But that makes me think of Crazy Rock. That used to make me think of uh, mm -hmm. Teen Night at Crazy Rock. Is that a place? In Romeoville. Oh, like, okay. it was the place where all the teens could go dance. And it was like the dance when the white people acted like they could dance. Hey. That was their jam. That and the Cover Girls, boy. They used to go crazy for the cover girls too. What's the cover girl? And what's that uh what's the old boy, the Spanish dude they used to sing? Stevie B? Remember him too? <laughs> they used to go crazy with Stevie I B don't too. Know any of those people. Oh Todd. Alright, so I talked about <laughs> Alright, so let me take it down a notch. Uh first of all, uh stylist, lifestyle specialist B. Smith uh passed away this weekend. Um, that was a very, very sad story. I also want... I thought that she had passed before. No, she had a... Remember, she had uh, Alzheimer's and her husband moved to Mistress and Al's. Oh, and the daughter was like, was, was like, right. what the, what the, who, I, where? Well? Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, I don't know. I have another story that I think is... Uh, out. So, did you all hear about the, the murder on 73rd and Bennett? I want to I send my sincerest, sincerest, sincerest condolences to my fraternity brother, uh, Warren Williams, whose wife was murdered in cold blood hmm. uh, in her car outside of our house. Uh, dom domestic violence is something else, and parents, I want you to be very aware of who your children are dating. Yes, that's actually uh, my schoolmate. Her daughter was killed by her boyfriend. So this wasn't a boyfriend. This was the daughter's boyfriend who was taking revenge. You know what? I don't want to get into the story except to say how tragic it was. And man, bro, that I Warren. To all of us, man, our hearts and thoughts and prayers go out to you. Um, yeah. Uh, did you see uh, the $14 million 
settlement for Cook County masturbators? <laughs> You're laughing. You mean, <laughs> you mean those prisoners? The prisoners oh, are oh, the, the county the, has to settle the with the public defenders because the you know the inmates when the public female public defenders would come in, they would start masturbating in the in the cells and stuff and taking shots. Anything to to, to cause trouble. Huh? <laughs> That's fourteen million dollars. Okay, I got a question. So, well, let me stop. I'm not going to ask the question. You think it was worth the 14? You think they was worth it for the settlement? Uh, what? <laughs> Just saying. $14 million. The county gets nothing out of this. This is. This I'm is, talking about the, for the public defenders. Oh, you mean the, the trauma? The what? The trauma that they suffered. $14 million in trauma. Shoot. Oh, God. Oh, my God. So, yeah, that's too much information. That's the human drink magnet telling you that. 14, she said she got $100 million. They got $14 million. She said she need a hundred plus stores. No, oh, know. my God. Oh, my God. Well, the county only got so much money. So. Oh, my God. Uh, um, let me see. Let me get another one. Um, oh, did y'all see Kim Fox clean Conway's clock yesterday? Did y'all see that? She cleaned his clock. It's like... That was the example of white privilege. Why you like you know you know I remember, I I'll never forget when I was in um, Bolingbrook and I got my four year academic scholarship to the University of Illinois at Urbana Champaign and the white girl who sat next and to you me. You went to Sizzler. What do you mean? To celebrate. We're no, going to Sizzler. No, 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 man. We went to oh, Family yeah. Square. Um. Anyway. Okay. See now you made me forget my story. Oh, uh, yep, she, that's it. So I got a four-year full-ride scholarship. And so she, I used to be just a smart student, but she just could not believe that a white person, a black person, could possibly be smarter than her. I felt like that's how Bill Conway you know, came you to took me. took some, some uh, deserving white person spot, right? That's what exactly it. I, 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 I should have been there. I was like, oh, my. I'm going to have to leave this show right now for, that you would do such a thing I was a like, white person. I was like, you know I got a 28 on my ACT, right? I was like, you know I got a 28, right? And I was like, you know I'm in the top... Three percent, you know, and I beat you in every test, but she just couldn't believe it. That's how I felt about Bill Conway. Um, you know what, Todd? Oh, shout out to Dion Cole. Shout out to Dion Cole for winning an NAACP Image Award. Uh, Todd, I want to get Dion Cole on the morning show to talk about that and all the great things he's got going on. Oh, please yeah. reach out to Brooke, please. He's good. Um, and then Todd, I had lunch with. Senator, pre, former Senate President uh, John Cullerton on Friday. Oh yeah, did he pay? No, Peter Skolsky paid from BSNF uh, Railroad. It was actually oh. at the. Um, I was at the Southern Northern something. All of them initials. Yeah, uh, it railroad I screwed up. But, but I was at the Santa Fe K uh luncheon, and I actually sat next to Senator Cullerton. And President, former Senate President Cullerton. Hey, man, you know, I, I having a conversation. It's like it's one thing to talk to people far away; it's another thing to have a conversation with them. He was really engaging, and really um, had a lot of great stories and a lot of great insight. That's him. Um, I was very impressed with him as a conversationalist. And that, that, that's him from ever. Man, I mean, that's what uh, he's known for from being in the house. He was hilarious. Uh, but, you know, he was on the box and he, he took his stuff serious, but people would like him. I mean, he I could see him really tricking you into being like, <laughs> <laughs> like really. No, but he was I mean, I was actually I talked to him. A lot. I was I was so engaged. I was so intrigued that I asked him if we could sit down more because I wanted to figure out how do we go from talking to getting more things done. Right, and he was just talking to me about his philosophy, half a loaf, and really using crises and things like that to move and advance, but always just trying to push the ball forward. And right. it was a really good conversation. He, I didn't know he was a public defender, right? So he was like, he has a. It was it, man. He, we no, had, I know he was a public defender. And guess what? He's probably tuned in because Rod. He's going to see Rod leaving because him and Rod live on the same block. <laughs> How crazy is that? Hey, that's the WVOM morning show. public defender, that means he didn't know the right people. Yeah, <laughs> uh, actually, that's why he's not still a public defender. Uh, and became a center president. Let's talk Chicago 1690. Hey, y'all, when we come back, we're going to ask the social media question of the day. Does Mary Lori Lightfoot have the moral high ground in the black community? Let's talk about it. We'll be back.
feeding all the right people, he's doing the state's attorney with all the rest of the, the Irish people. No, you got to have somebody on the other side to make sure they bat a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on now, you can't fix you can't fix it if if you you got to run both sides of the chamber, man. Yeah, good point. Good point. Hey, man, you gotta work the angles, man. You gotta work the angles. You do. <sighs> Can I tell y'all? I've had some examples this week of. All right, y'all. So can I just say this? And I need to, I'm going to put this out here right now. I didn't really feel like Anderson Cooper destroyed Rob Bogoyevich. I didn't either. In the commercial. I felt like all he did was pick up the white guy mantle of being like bad, 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 and, and trying to score points and create a social media moment. Like that whole, yeah. that whole he smashed him and he destroyed him. No, it wasn't a debate. He just said, I don't like you because you were blocked. He just parroted all the, he yeah. offered no tangible. And when, and if you go to freaking jail, if you don't come back and learn, so he should have went to jail and been like, oh, uh, I learned nothing. I didn't feel anything. No, I think experience changes you. Or not changes you, but gives you a different perspective. But again, I didn't feel like that was, I mean, I didn't even feel like he let him talk. Like, I feel like he was like, I want to make all of the white people in, Ill I think he was mad because he think Rob might beat him on the gray hairstyle now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I didn't, I didn't feel like it was that. I didn't, I didn't feel like, well, I, I mean, I watched it and I kept watching it. And it's like, if you are going to be a diehard anti-Trumper, then that's what you want. If you want to hear what the guy learned, like if somebody, I, I just, I don't know. And I mean, I think I'm going to ask about the clemencies and the pardons and all that stuff. But I think that, first of all, I don't think any white person has black people have their understanding until they have something until you get your nigga moment. Yeah, I thought it was just uh, it, it, was it supposed to be an interview or was it supposed to be an argument? That's And, and it wasn't even an argument because Anderson was in control. It's right. like, I got the mic. You, like, if I decide I'm going to talk over you and you ain't getting nothing and I Right, and you're far away, so you got a, a three, five, seven second delay. Right, yeah. So by the time you even know to pause, Right? He could just keep on rolling. And by the time you get your to go in when he says he could be back on it, and they're going to cut. It's like, yeah. man. I, I, yeah, my, my thought is uh, when you're interviewing somebody, you're actually supposed to be trying to, to find something out. And he was like, let's just argue for a while. I mean, I feel like he was no different than watching Don Lemon or some shit. Just. <laughs> I never, never thought Don Are we was back? Talking about three minutes. Yeah. I never oh. thought Don Lemon was that bad. I mean, Don Lemon actually interviewed me, and I, I found him to be fine. I guess I really don't, don't watch a lot of Don Lemon stuff. Hmm. Someone has a request for me. That's never to follow the link. That don't sound fun. Sounds like a trap. It's a trap! Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. You got a black bag? Uh, I do have a black bag, but I should look it up now because I'll forget. I will forget. Who makes these? Is there a way to get them a suggestion before? Oh, this is it for the year. Yeah, this is this last week. Damn. And and they make them. They they make they gave us the uh, the names. Chapman attended. Okay, I'll do Ivy Walker. Okay. <laughs> Next break. Yeah. <coughs> oh, it was funny. I sent Rich Miller. A quote like I, I it's funny to me to watch all of the Springfield people be so upset even as they wallow and mire in the shit that's going on right now
You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Stroger Ata. Uh, in just a little less than a half hour. For, well, do you think he's going to be on time or late? You want to put a bet? Want to bet? Anybody want to bet on the bet? On the bet? Listen, well, when, you're, okay. when you go back to your bed after 80 years. <laughs> Man, ain't he used to being on time, though? Like, ain't he used oh, to being cool. on time? Like, look. Is he? You, you think? Oh, yeah. Huh? You know, I, I feel like sometimes, you know, like when brothers come home, sometimes they are, you know, they got a a routine, like like they have been institutionalized. I mean, I think sometimes you gotta get. Remember, he, did you read the interview when he said that when he found out he was getting released, he asked, could he get a run in before? Yeah, I heard that. Because he was used to his pattern, etc. Like, think about that, man. That that's deep. That's pretty deep. All right, y'all. Let's talk Chicago 1690. It's time for the social media question of the day. Uh, Todd, I was listening to, first of all, I talked about Mayor Lori Lightfoot last week having her poverty summit where it was all of the rich white people getting together, but making a plan to get rid of the black people. <laughs> oh, excuse me, excuse me. They were talking about solutions to the poverty. And somebody was like, tell them to move. <laughs> anyway. That's, that's how I say it. Uh, art imitates life and life imitates art because that's basically what the purge was about ah see so let me tell you so Todd you know I you know I listen to the morning show and sometimes I listen to other shows and I was listening to another show I was listening, actually I was listening to our very own Perry Small and the mayor came on and talked about um, poverty etc 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 and I'm, I'm not going to trip out. I do think it was pretty generic. I feel like it was like a response to us saying, uh, how are you going to have a meeting about black people and not invite no black people? Then you're going to call in to tell the black people about it on the radio the next day. But I'm cool, I'm cool, I'm cool. <laughs> Is that not like the definition of progressive? <laughs> they were like, oh, look, I was like, look, I'm saying. And then, look, I'm not tripping, I'm not tripping. But how are you going to say, yeah, we had a meeting about y'all yesterday? <laughs> and so this is the first in the process. You know, black people hate to hear that, right? And then she said, "This is the first meeting in a process to engage the rest." Okay, the first meeting is the meeting. All the peripheral stuff. Like if you get to the second meeting, it's like you are an afterthought. Yeah. Right. Like they was like, "Oh Isn't wait." That what you always say with the, the lobby and stuff. Right. They, they had a meeting and then they have another meeting to tell you what you're going to do. Right. And so, look, they like, and so they, basically what they did, I think a meeting was like, they going to um, chop up and tell you which color t-shirts, which white people take which color t-shirts to which neighborhoods. That's really what happened, right? Because, I mean, again, and they had to acknowledge, you know, they acknowledged later. They were like, well, uh, yeah, you know, we didn't think to invite the black people to this meeting. Yeah. Right? And then the black people that usually get to come, them the ones that be like, uh, black, are you talking to me? I'm a socialist. Right? They don't be black. They be, the black people for us in them rooms don't, the last thing they consider themselves, they be like, I am socialist, feminist, um, a vegan. Uh, they will name everything but being black. But well, that's okay. Does that not mean that uh, they feel that we just don't have a winning team? Oh, right. Well. Even with the black man? Like they don't have a team. Maybe that's the problem. Not the winning team. We just don't have a team. Hmm. Okay. So I'll start there. Then did you see she uh, had a tough love speech over at Window Phillips High School? Now Phillips is on what, Todd? Ain't that on 40? 39. 39th. Okay, so Phillips. It's in the hood, right? But they also got the football team, right? Okay. Now, the mayor goes there and she says that the challenge with the with the with the violence, because you know we've been having this explosion of violence, which I think is really going to be her Achilles heel, right? This violence and shit. I think it's every mayor's Achilles heel, but if she doesn't get a hold of it, um, it's going to be really her issue. But Todd, she decided, uh, she said that it was teens and their parents who have who are part of the problem, which I agree with. But you remember when Ron said that? 
Remember when Robin said it was, uh, what did he say? It was values and character. She basically said the same thing, but she called Rom out for it, uh, right? Two years ago, I remember when Rom said, because I did the show, I was like, who do you think he is telling somebody you ain't got no home train? Hmm. I was going off. I was going off. But then I see the mayor then goes to the really, like, I think it's one thing when you are talking about it, it's another thing when it's the real life, and you're like, wait a minute, they did what? <laughs> Where was their parents at? What did their parents say? But the mayor, according to the newspapers, Todd, she apparently has the moral high ground, uh-huh. according to the press. Yeah, exactly. Which is which is mighty important. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you from experience. <laughs> when the press says that you're the villain, then you are the villain in uh, many eyes, and if they decide you're the hero, then you're the hero in many eyes. So, that is the question. So. But you know, when I first thing I do is look at the paper and I say, who wrote this story? And generally, it's not someone with the last name Johnson or Washington. <laughs> or Washington. Well, Washington, oh. and sometimes, yeah. yeah. But that one usually is writing like, you poor colored people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but Todd, usually it's a white someone writing about black people. And again, they now have the clear. Remember I told you, I think we see we don't see the mayor the same way white people see Oh, most definitely. Right? So I want to ask black folks, does Mayor Lori Lightfoot have the moral high ground in the black community? Give us a call, 312-374-8130. Does she have the, I mean, does she have the right, the credibility to come into the black community and blame and, 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 and go at the parents and go at the families? Now, she had a poverty summit the day before without the black people that she the poverty that she was having comes you, you see what I'm saying like so you talking about the parents with the white folks then you go do a speech t- wagging your finger at the black people still ain't had no black people at the meeting then you come on the morning show I mean no excuse me not the morning show no, not cause you know you ain't coming on the morning show with that came on and then say oh it was just the first of a series of meetings does she have the moral high ground in the black community do black people feel like that mayor speaks for me. And I feel like, Todd, we be getting the bait and switch. Like, so you hear she's fighting for poverty, right? And so the black people are like, yay! And then I say, but it ain't no white black people at the meeting. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. Then she come and, you know, because I feel like this is the Bill Cosby story. Right? Before Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby minus the 50 no, cents. Remember when he, he, uh, the he co- said that in his speech? Yep. Yeah. That you need to pull your pants up and get your... Right. So give us a call, 312-374-8. Y'all scared? I know, because she will whoop on you. Yeah. Right? She will cut, you know, shit. I mean, think about that. I, I've, I've said this on numerous occasions, that I feel like the mayor operates, like, very maternalistically when she's dealing with people. Like, she's right, and how dare you. You know, like, when she turned around and was like, clap, fools. Right. Well, you know, she's got the moral high ground. High According to who? That's my Choose question. Your words. Like, like okay. that. You, yeah. Like 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 that. Right? Do that again, cause that that that's good. Choose your words. Like, Choose your words carefully. Yeah, she talks to you like you like your mama. <laughs> I'm just saying, and I, I'm just saying. Maybe, I mean, maybe she does have the moral authority. Does she have the moral high ground? Does she have the moral high ground to you, Todd? Uh, not for me. I, um, I look at it as when I look at the people who she's surrounded by, I'm not really impressed. And you know, I think that we have our our own people who are talented, but we see her picking people from you know the suburbs to have to run a place where we have like 2.7 million people and there no no smart black ones. I, uh, you know. She's not the only one who's who's made me feel this way, but I mean, think about this. I, I I'm gonna tell you when I was listening to her comments on the um on poverty, and she was talking about the University of Michigan uh, professor from University of Michigan. Even though we got the University of Illinois here that's done five bazillion poverty studies in the world, I just I just feel like let's go to the phone lines. Tamiko, you're on top of Chicago, sixteen ninety. Good morning, everyone. Uh oh, good morning. That's my president, y'all. Miss Tamiko Hope, president of What's Up for the Black People. What's up this morning, darling? 
So I feel like no one, no one gets to gets to judge unless you walk the mile in our shoes living in where we come up from. And the people that always claim, oh, I grew up in Cabrini, I grew up in this area. You cannot, live in two, three years there, you cannot even pretty much claim to know what's going on. Unless you lived it all of your life from childhood to adulthood, you can't, you don't understand. So I went, I stopped in for a little minute to see what was going on. But I, I, what I saw mostly was what I saw growing up. Everybody talking about us without us truly in the room to understand what was going on around us and what is going on around us. Some people want to help, but they are so disconnected. And then some people, they still just eating out five plates and they don't know what else to do because they've been doing it pretty much all of their career after college. If you, I mean, it doesn't take rocket science. But seriously, if you running around talking about you claiming to help us and you've been doing running the same playbook for decades, you're disingenuous. Mm. That's it. That's Thank all. You. Thank you, Tamiko. Uh, you know what? I can always count on Tamiko because you know what? Um, I, you know, I just feel like, Todd, the whole discussion about black people without black people really being president and without black people who are representative right you got all of these people from everywhere else in the world talking about the studying of black people and their solutions for black people in Chicago give us a call 312-374-8130 does Mayor Lori Lightfoot have the moral high ground in the black community we'll be back more of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up somebody from another state more likely they're gonna come sometimes they, they move in the in the black area but they still don't have any any real ties they surely don't have any any friends who grew up in the neighborhood that's like hey you know you can do this too that's what the uh, the Latinos did when Mayor Daly was the mayor and he started giving them these big jobs they started calling people and saying, hey, look, get a company together, and you can bid on this stuff. I mean, when the Department of Transportation was headed by a Latino, don't think Latinos didn't do really well. <laughs> Just like they're doing at the tollway now. Yeah. That's I mean, like when... They look out for each other. And, you know, like uh, most of these 
these uh, big construction projects, there's always construction on the roads. You know, they were always controlled by, by downstaters or something of that nature. We were never a part of that kind of stuff and probably still aren't, to be honest with you. But uh, I guess I guess under Blagojevich, there was a guy from up north. I think that Martin guy, I think. I think he was from up north. But that doesn't mean black people were in the mix. That's why I always say, if you want power, if you want your area to, to do better, that means you have to elect somebody who's from your area who cares about it. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing everybody don't care that they help everybody, but for the most part, and I'm not talking about High Park, that is an island unto itself. It's a different place. Oh yeah, I know. I was looking up my black fact. And then I find out Hans does not have Word on his computer. How does he write stuff? He doesn't. Kids don't write. They don't use it. They text. <laughs> they will text you. Jobs are now saying it's better to, to respond to people and talk to them via text than it is via email or phone. I like texting, but... I don't. I feel like... I mean, there's a practicality that, that's, not, that's missing there. Oh, wait a minute. Microsoft Office. Aha. Can you hit that? Mina, all oh, gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. No, he parking. No, he's parking. Thou. A calling Do not pass me by Save your Hear my humble cry. Why, oh, no, that's how I call him. Do not pass me by. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, to Todd. I'm getting reports. They're telling me. They're telling me that former Illinois Governor Rob Bogoyevich is parking and is on his way up. It's getting ready to go down, 7 o'clock. Get your popcorn because it's going down. Down at 7 o'clock. I got questions. Y'all call, we're going to take some calls, it's going to be only popping. But Todd, I'm asking the social media question of the day. Does the mayor have the moral high ground? Now see, my girl Lori K. Westerfield says that in her lifetime, she's never known a mayor to budget for anti-poverty efforts. Uh, I can see that the impact that people should join be, should be in the room. I'm curious who are the poverty czars in our community. I rarely hear electeds talk about poverty-only violence. Um, I, first of all, I think that's the due diligence that the mayor is responsible for doing. That's, that goes back to, remember the planning commissioner saying, uh, we couldn't do nothing on the west side because we, we couldn't find anybody that did it? Yes. It's like, you don't know nobody, right? If you got to go outside, is it, mm, I, I feel like an anti-poverty budget that enriches other white folks is the cycle. Remember, white people profit off of black people's pain and suffering. I'm not crazy. Marvin, you on the top of Chicago. Does the mayor have the moral high ground in the black community? 
Hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, Mage. what's up, brother? Uh, Todd. Right. Yeah, I said it. They benefit off the misery right. of our people. This country was built on benefiting off the misery. Uh, I mean, if they really want a, a change, they need to hold themselves accountable for the institutional racism that they make us live under. Under that, you know, I mean, from your red line into your uh, institutional uh, racist uh, long practices. I mean, your uh, corrupt organizations, how they uh, discriminate and exclude us. I mean, systemic racism, you know, and exclude And then they act like they uh, don't understand why we're in poverty. Right. How they excluded us out. So, I mean, it's not rocket science to understand why. So if they want to solve the problem, as you said, they would have us at the table to explain why. And they know why. Thank you. So, man. so Larry and Life, we need to be genuine and really, you know, uh, wanna, you know, talk to us to have a, a solution. Thank you, my brother. Let me go to Ron. Ron, you on top travel sixteen ninety. Does the mayor have the moral high ground in the black community? Hey, good morning, man. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Well, you know, high ground is a military word. It's a military term, and you and no one wins the the high ground until they have won the war. So, no, no one has the moral high ground because the war has not been won yet. Got it. Thank you, Ron. Actually, Ron's got that backwards. Okay. The way you win the war is you, you capture the high ground and you shoot everybody down, but no, you because right. as they running up the hill, you be like That's right. That's why it's important to take out that pillbox. Man, the pillbox. See, look at you. You got all the military technology. I watch Todd, a lot of TV. Uh, Todd, I'm, I'm going to just say this. I, as I have told you on numerous occasions, the pain and suffering of black people is used, is, is used to make white profit. It just is. It is all of the biggest social service agencies that black people report to, white. Oh, yeah. Right, white. And and remember and, and before you, you know, I was in Springfield uh, twenty five years ago, mm -hmm. and that was that was the uh, the same issue. They, people were complaining. Why do we have to? Why do you have to give all this money to them so they can give it to us and tell us what to do? And then if they but they know but they be like we got you we give you a million dollars but you gotta get a fiscal agent they gotta pass it out to you because you know you can't get them Negroes that much money. I guess my question is, guys, you know I I I, I am concerned that. I, my concern is that you go to the people you know, right? You 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 work with the people you know, and I think the mayor has a responsibility to come down from the iron gilded cage and down. You know, like when you up operating with the with the white shoe law firms and the multi, and you billing a thousand dollars an hour, you don't know regular black people, and you don't even know the real people that's fighting on the front lines of poverty. You know the white people that the white people told you was. Right. She got to do some due diligence. I still don't know who black represent, who is the black people that represent black people in the mayor's administration. Look, y'all, when we come back, he is in the building on time. It is former Illinois Governor Rob Agoyevich. Hey, y'all, get your popcorn because it's going down. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. 1690 WBON. Brown shoes. Who? Lawyers. You wouldn't wear a white shoe? Yeah, but the white shoe law firm is the upper crust of the crust of the crusting. Look at Todd. Todd, you giving up your seat? No, I told you what my mama said. Never give up your seat. That's right. Okay, but so you gotta have some space. So this is what I'm gonna do, cause I'm a, you're gonna be this camera. Okay. So if you do scoot there, mm -hmm. you'll still get a full shot. I want to. I want to square on. Yeah. Actually, Ty, scoot over just a little this way. Right. Yep, and right. then I could both have right. both of y'all there. Oops. Cool. Good good then give me this camera, which I'm going to turn here.
All right, Todd, you got the camera. Talk to the people. Do I got to squash y'all beef first? You want me to take care of that first, lady dog? Look, y'all. Hey, man. I'm going to make sure Ty is straight. I ain't going to let Rod punk him. That's I got ass. that. I, I got it. I got to live in the future, man. I got enough. Uh, I got high blood pressure. <laughs> I don't get to work on uh, I'm past this year. <laughs> I tell you what I do need. Maybe some water. I'm losing. I'm losing moisture quick, huh? He's got soft hands. His hands are so soft. He's so nice. <laughs> he was a little before my time, but I remember my parents, my grandparents. Oh, well, that, that, there's nothing. He's charming. Right now, about a year ago. Did you, you know Sonia? Did you meet Sonia? Okay, come on. Sonia and Mark is going to rock with you. All right. Mark, you can come in until we get started. Mark, you got those facts? Okay. Governor, grab a seat right hey, there. How are you? Oh, it's good man, to see you, buddy. How's your family? Oh, they're doing well, thanks. Right, well, I am going to go. sit right there. All right. I, I have to be honest with you, though. I actually like your hair better this way. Oh, yeah, thanks. I'm having a hard time dealing with it. It's eight years later. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Everybody yeah. talks about they want to. The lady. Well, stop. Let me not say the ladies. But people all talk about your hair. Um, and everybody was watching it. I think you should stick with the gray. I think that's probably why Anderson Cooper was mad at you, bro. He's <laughs> like, you stole his style. <laughs> You're still in this thing. You're still in this thing, man. Um, so wait, let me do this because okay. I, I want to do this before we get started. Yep. Todd, I'm going to be a, I got to make sure I take care of my guy. Todd said that you guys were not on the best of terms during your time as governor. So I hope that at this point, you, look, Todd, why are you making that face? I want to make Todd as my co-host, so I want to make sure y'all cool. You good? Todd, right. you got anything you got to say? I got nothing against him, no. Okay. No. I just want to make sure. All right, Governor. Um, I would say, do you need any water? But I'm not you need sure anything? We, do we have, have a little water? Yeah. Right. Todd! Thanks, Todd. Yeah, no. It's, it's Tell like, Todd we need water. It's a hot box. Okay. You do everything you got to do. Attack me whatever you got to do, Todd. I can't lose votes now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm not trying to get any votes. Yeah, so right. Right. Can you get him some water, right. Todd? Sure Thank you. Um. All right. Uh, Governor, so you know, you are on Facebook Live the whole time. So this, oh. actually, can you scoot over just a little yes. bit? I'm going to keep you in both shots. If you, Todd, scoot over just a hair. All right. Which way? If you can stay right there, this way. And if you stay there, now nah, I got a perfect shot of both of you. Okay, so look, right. Maze, it, you do it directly, right? You don't go directly into this? You, it's, this camera's looking at you oh, right here. You. Right. So you talk straight into Just it. Just talk like this? Yep. Right, in. Yep. Yep. right into it. Perfect. And Thanks. the cameras don't go off, so you're on the whole time. Like best that. time <laughs> is when we're not on air. The best questions are when we're not on air. I have a ton of people that sent in questions that we have, but we want to have a straight up conversation. I'm gonna tell you that um, I did not, this is, I, I did not agree, I'm gonna say not agree, I didn't like the Anderson Cooper interview from the standpoint of, I feel like there was a, there's gotta be a point of redemption. So this is not a combative interview. I do have real questions. I'm gonna ask, um, I got real questions. Man, but I, I am, it is really interesting to me the dichotomy of response of you getting out. Like it seems like black folks are like yes, yes. and it's like white folks are like what? Like the Springfield crowd is like whoa, like right. get them back. I sent Rich Miller a note, right? And I was like, Rich, I'm having Rod on, and he sends me this tirade, this tweet that he sent, and I was just like, damn, bro, with everything that's going on in Springfield right now, I would think that. This would be timely for the information, for perspective, etc. Um, so I think this will be a good time. We got a good hour. Um, if there's things you want to get out, please feel free to get them out. I got questions. People have questions. Do you want to take any calls? Of course, anything you want to do. All right, that'll be awesome. Uh, thank and thank you for coming here. I'm going to tell you, man. You have your wife is the P is the champion of the world. Yes. She was undyingly loyal, dedicated. I would send her notes every once in a while and be like, hey, just keep your head up. Know that on our side of town, everybody's still. Yeah. And she would be at the Bud Billiken bringing signs down and all that. I just, man. So you owe her oh, a lot. I'm blessed. 
Headphones. Before you know it. Todd. Headphones. Tell Todd to get them straight. Oh. Yeah, do them Todd. Take care of Just put these on again. Yeah. Does that one work, Todd? Yeah. I can't hear anything now. Nothing. And what a love, Mo. She has so much so. She <laughs> said, "Excuse me, little homie. I know you don't know me. He's gonna get you." Swim in the end. I'm from blow trees in. Yeah, that one on the far seems to be the best. Can you hear? Nothing. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Thank you. Hey, Todd, if I want to lower this a little, I... Oh, this one! Uh, here. Oh, oh. You, uh... Lower. Thank you, Todd. You know, we work on a shoestring budget. <laughs> I'm coming home again. Man, we started again. You are tuned in to the top of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. But hey, y'all, y'all know how we do at the top of the hour. Gotta say what's up to the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Samantha Thomas in the newsroom? Samantha, we about to make some news today, so get that record button ready. Gotta say what's up to the musical conductor of the Soul Plane, Miss Sonia Escobar. She got the Lions ready to rock and roll. I got my co-host, Todd Stroger. But hey, y'all. It's been eight years coming. The world has changed. But God, it seems like it's still the same. It seems like eight years ago, a little bit more than eight years ago, we started down a, a crazy path in which Illinois government was turned upside down on its ear. Uh, and we saw, I, I got to say this, we saw... Governor Rob Bogoyevich go through, man, I don't even know what the hell to call it. I really don't. I think that we all watched it on our side of town and was like, something is just not right here. Uh, but we I'll, couldn't I'll call it hell. Huh? I call it hell. We, when the feds put their, their, their sights on you, mm -hmm. it's hell. And, and you know what? So I can't wait to talk about this because I got two people who have had federal investigations, have been at the top to the pinnacle of power, and all the way to the bottom and right here on the morning show. But let, let me do this. Let me start by saying, as you heard from our musical conductor, Sonia Escobar, the song Welcome Home. Welcome home and welcome back to the WVON Morning Show. Uh, former Governor Illinois of Illinois, Rob Bogoyevich. Welcome back, my brother. I appreciate you, Mace. Thanks for having me. Hey, Todd. Nice to see you again, little friend. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, we came in the, the same class together. There were a lot of people who rose to the top, like uh, Durkin. Uh, uh, oh man, what was that treasurer's name? I always forget that guy's name, but he, he was a real nice guy. Ferris. What? No, no, no. Oh, the uh, Rutherford. Rutherford. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, who's who was the minority leader? Tom Cross, Tom, Tom Dart. Hey, I can't help but if there was a lot of successful people uh, in our uh, class. Hey, you got there were 43 actually, people who came 40, in. 43 people who came yeah. in, and quite frankly, all of you guys went to the tip, tip, tip top. Uh, some of you all did not have as good of a team Some people as, went to Congress. Some people went to Congress, including yeah. Governor yeah. Rod Bogoyevich, <laughs> right? Uh, let, me, let me start. Let me go back because I want to do this before we get in. Mm -hmm. Governor Rod Bogoyevich, the first question I want to ask is what have you learned? throughout the course of this entire situation. I'm gonna start right there. What have you learned? Don't trust the federal prosecutors. Don't always trust what they tell you in some places that come out of law enforcement. And you know, it, it's, it's, it was a shocking experience what they did to my family and me and how this all happened. And um, I'm not gonna overdo it and dwell on it because when something like this happens, it's a lot better to leave the past behind and look to the future. Winston Churchill said, if you open up a quarrel between the present and the past, you risk losing the future. So 
rather than you know belabor what they did the fact of the matter is i was sent to prison for things that are routine politics they're not crimes um, they moved the line in order to gain the convictions that they were able to get at a second trial and i would say the biggest lesson i learned was the fact that there are some people in those very high places who have uncontrolled power that's what supreme court justice Breyer called it of some of these prosecutors federal criminal prosecutors and they're immune from any kind of accountability and they basically with all those resources and all that power they can get away with doing what they want to do to people and that's an experience i think that the african-american community has known for a long long time and people on my side of town don't and uh, so for me the probably the most shocking lesson i've learned and i've learned it in a hard way is that you can't always trust them they don't always get it right and what i hope to do now is to take the evil that was done to me and to my family and make it into something good and so criminal justice reform is something that i'm really committed to i've lived this issue on both sides now i was the governor of illinois i was a congressman i could have done so much more I, probably my biggest regret but through my years in prison knowing some of the men i served time with who did make mistakes many of them but they're not bad people they're good people and they deserve an opportunity to, to get their lives back on track and i hope to be helpful in that regard governor did you make a mistake uh there seems to be this this visceral need for um a portion of the community particularly the springfield community i've not seen such vitriol against someone in so i, I mean i haven't seen anything mm -hmm. like this Governor, it seems like everybody is asking you to apologize, to admit what you did wrong, and they are saying that they can move on, but you are, an, I, I would quote Rich Miller, he called you, I believe, an unrepentant liar. Um, help me understand, Governor, what is the difference between the perception that people believe you are guilty and should admit guilt, and you still maintaining that you are not, you are not guilty? Well, I would disagree with him on his characterization. I would, <laughs> I'm a reader. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I call me an unrepentant truth teller. Uh-oh. I would be lying if I said I broke a law. When you ask for campaign contributions, when you see campaign contributions in politics, as long as you don't promise anything or threaten anyone, and I never did, and they don't even allege that, it's perfectly legal. Under the standard they used to convict me, every single person in politics all across America would go to prison with me, every senator, every governor. Uh, every mayor because that's how the system works that's legal what you cannot do is make an express promise or a, a an explicit threat which i never did and no one working for me ever did but they convicted me by moving the line and saying that if i had some understanding that maybe because we did some things in government someone might help us raise campaign contributions that somehow becomes a crime again that standard would could convict everybody in politics so no i, I can't possibly lie about what they did and the fact is i think that over time eventually as dr martin luther king said truth crushed to earth will one day rise again because no lie can live forever and i'll continue to do everything i can fighting the system to get the truth out not just for me but again for the people i've seen they've done this too for so long and i'll tell you something and we'll talk more about this i hope but one of the big lessons i learned was it is a racist and and oftentimes corrupt criminal justice system and this is why I think in the African-American community, Patty and I and my children have received so much love and support. And I want to say this, if I can, to your audience. Thank you for that, for your kindness and warmth, because it gets lonely when they do it to you. And we'd have to come to the south side or the west side to get some love once in a while that I wasn't getting in my neighborhood. Now, Governor, so i got to ask you this, because I, I watched the Anderson Cooper interview and I watched people... I mean, I've seen, I've heard a lot, and you've been talking about criminal justice reform. The first thing that I have heard from quite a few people who are your naysayers is when you were uh, governor, you let quite a few pardons, clemencies, and things pile up that you did not see criminal justice reform as a priority. Why should they trust you now? Well, now that's a good question. First of all, there's something I could admit to. I was wrong. That's a mistake, a big mistake, and I regret that immensely i spent eight years in prison having more than enough time to remind myself how i missed an opportunity could have done so much more i did commutations i did clemencies i did some pardons but i did them in reaction to files that my staff brought me i didn't go to the office every day trying to look for the cases uh, my priorities were health care for children and 
things like free public transportation for our seniors. We did the All Kids program, giving all of our children access to affordable health care. My priority was to, frankly, fight that, I believe, corrupt system in Springfield that Rich Miller is a member of. Hold on, let me read it to you. Yeah. I'm going to read it to you the quote. Sure. Because, I, you know, I wasn't like, Rich, tell everybody, tune in. Yeah. He said, he sent me this text back. He said, an unrepentant, convicted felon, and incorrigible, proven liar should not be given a free pass to say whatever comes out of his putrid mouth without even questioning it. Stop giving credence to this clown's ravings rant i i i so i i, I heard that i read that at yeah. the same time that i was i'm watching what is happening in springfield that everybody is a part of i how do you respond you know what let's do yes. this let's let me freeze you here because i okay. gotta go to traffic and weather all right i'm gonna tell y'all now you better tune into facebook live because i got good <laughs> questions that we'll ask uh, but we are going to come back, and Governor, I'm going to ask you to talk to me about what's going on in Springfield, and why do they feel so strongly about you? I think you might know some of the keys to the to the castle, <laughs> and they might be a little nervous, like some long-tailed cats in a room full of rocking chairs. We'll be back after traffic and the weather with Governor Rod Bogoyevich. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson. Take this off. You're still on camera. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not ignoring you, but I got to do a fact at uh, 728, so I, I want to make sure you're there, right? It's good to see Ty. Okay. You know, when he was like negative on me, I never was on him. I always liked Ty. Yeah. I try to keep other people's names out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> my right, Ty was an easy punching bag back in the day. He, but he was a, he's always a nice, genuinely nice gentle kind person. Yeah, I think that's what made him easy to get punched here. Let's yeah. move this guy. Because you. you. Oh, yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry about that. It's all right. It's all right. It's like, all right. So. But just know when you turn your mic on, you yep. turn that off. Gov, I'm going to need you to stay in oh, yes, this. I'm, I'm still rocking That's this right. camera. All right. Yep. Um, I'll tell you when I cut to this okay. one. So, now I'm going to ask you. I was, uh, do you st oh, first of all, my friend, um, Walter Burnett told me to tell you hello. I love Walter. <laughs> He's like me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, Governor, why, 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 why is the intense for why is the hate for you so intense in Springfield? Like, for all of the things that we see, and I'll do it on air probably, but I'm I'm just curious right now. Why do you think the the level of in, the intensity of them wanting you to like 14 years? And just as a sidebar, I yeah. talked to one of your neighbors who just retired, and he stood up in front of uh, KPEG and said, he probably wouldn't say it on TV, but he was like, you got too much time, right? He was like, it was just out of control. Uh, your neighbor on your block, that's the short guy. Colors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why? Why is it such animosity towards you? Because I was a change agent, and I was shaking things up, moving the money around, and giving it to healthcare and the, the vulnerable and those who didn't get access to it before. And I was taking it from the special interests. And Madigan is the guy, the guardian of all of that. And so he's the guy who's been running the show there for 100 years. And, uh, you know, that's something I sure hope I can say on the radio. You because, get, you yeah, because that, that really sums up why that, that I'm getting that kind of vitriol. Um, but I'm, I wear that as a badge of honor because it's food positive. That I kept my promises and fought that system. Uh, so, Governor, that's I, I I have a feeling that that's part of the reason why as well because we talk about we talk we call it the Illinois Minotti, right? Which is well it's the yeah. it is the Illinois secret political society that we are seeing unravel right now. Um, like, with have you been watching? Have you been no. following any of this stuff? No. So, I'm going to tell you. Um, when we get out of here, I'm going to send you some podcasts or some stuff to check out. Okay. Uh, Mike McClain, uh, yeah, like all the all of the whole thing is coming apart, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're right. like comment, etc. And there is a you don't know this, but when I was when you were governor, I got the largest uh, professional services contract ever awarded to a black company ever, right? And I remember expressly coming to Victor and being Robeson. like, yes, and being time. like, Victor, man, y'all plugged me. 
I need to make a donation. I want to do whatever. And they was and Victor was like, we're not even interested. You can come to the fundraiser. Here's your tickets. We don't want nothing from you. And it was the Matagoons who came and said, I got to give up $2 million of that contract. Right? And they basically, when I didn't, I got a federal investigation. So I, there is, there's a lot that I think that yes, you, sir. they make. Yeah. And you shaking up. And then between you and Emo, that's you right. had them boxed in. That's right. And then they was like, we got to get you at all costs. All right, let's yeah. go. We're ready. Okay. We're back. You're going to be to this camera. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Just one look at you. And I know it's gonna be okay. a lovely day. <clears throat> you are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Hey, y'all, stay tuned. At 728, Todd is going to have an amazing black fact. But I'm going to tell you right now, we got in the studio former Illinois Governor Rod Bogoyevich. Governor Bogoyevich, when we went to break, we I was asking you why. Why, why, why do you think, like, I read to you the quote from Rich Miller. Um, I was excited. I was like, look, man, I'm sure everybody in Springfield will want to hear. And he was like, you, you heard the incorrigible. Right. Un why is there such vitriol? in Springfield to you and why do you think there is such a dichotomy of response to you between black folks and white folks? Well first of all on the Springfield part when I ran for governor I promised to change things and shake things up and I did and I think the proof that I kept my promises is that I get responses like that I get pushed back like that from Rich Miller. Rich Miller if your viewers or listeners are not aware has been there for almost as long as Madigan. He's a he's the mouthpiece of the Madagoons. Oh, claims to be. Uh oh. <laughs> he claims to be an independent news agency, but he just sits there in the speaker's office and does Madigan's bidding. And so Madigan's been king of the Springfield establishment for, you know, probably since Abraham Lincoln was president. <laughs> and uh, they've been having it their own way for a long time. They've all gotten rich down there. Uh, Madigan's law practice has thrived and he's become a very, very rich man as a result of that because they control the play the rules and they make the rules that benefit them financially. And so you got a guy like me coming in there and they, I think they assumed that you know I was going to be one of them and kind of be basically sell out the people and, and just kind of go along and get along and, and play their game and I didn't and I was determined to shake things up by reordering the priorities of the state. We got the all kids program for all of our children getting access to affordable health care that costs money, so where do you get the money? I didn't want to raise taxes on people. I promised I wouldn't. I think that was wrong. Why? Because I discovered when I was there that there were billions of dollars in taxpayer money that could be used for things that were better than that what they were being used for at the time. And so we moved that money around. And with the help of Emil Jones and the state senate through his leadership, he and I were able to work around that again. And through that, we were able to get all kids. We were able to get free rides for our senior citizens and the disabled. We were able to get preschool for all three and four year olds, access to affordable uh, preschool, giving kids a chance to start out early, and a whole bunch of other things. And we put a record amount of money in public education. And we did that around the establishment. And when you do that, you're going to piss people off. And when all this came on me, there's all kinds of theories out there that maybe this wasn't some accident. So I got some. So yeah. you don't even got to go there because okay. I'm going there. All I'm right. going there. All right. Um, Please go there. <laughs> so. Because here's the thing, guys. I talk about the Illinois Minotti that exists. I wrote to you. I wrote four years ago, Chicago Defender. That's I told a great you, name, by the way. Uh, yeah, because it, it, it is exactly it's what a swamp it is. Down there. It is beyond a swamp. Yeah. So it and and there is a system that is put in place to protect others, uh, protect a machine that profits off the pain and suffering of right. black folks. Uh, and we tend to fight for the social service fight, but I do want to talk yep. about this real quick. Governor, you, uh, Carol Adams, social services, all that good yeah. stuff, I can tick that off. Great lady. But, Governor, you also messed with the economic pie down in Springfield. Um, but that, that, I want to go to another space. You know, I ran into Tony Resco. Um, mm. I ran into Tony Resco at the Soho House maybe about three weeks ago. I never really, I used to see him from afar. Mm -hmm. He was like, like you'd be like, ooh, that's Tony Resco. And you'd be like, wow, oh, God, you know. Um, Governor, uh, Tony Resco did hard time 
uh, at the same time that you did hard time. Um, you all seem to both have an interesting connection to the president, uh, the first uh, to President Obama. Right. You in relation to the Senate seat, uh, Tony Resco as being one of your close confidants. Um, I was watching and as all this was paying out and I was watching Roger Stone and I was watching yeah. all that. I was like, I think if I wanted to have a friend, I think I'd a friend. I'd rather have President Trump, right? Because President Trump looks out for his friends. But I got a question. Is there any connection between uh, the Senate seat, um, you being put in jail, Tony Resco being put in jail, and the proximity to President Barack Obama? It, it could very well be. There could be something to that. If you look back on, in old new, newspaper clippings, you'll see that in the summer of 2008, a few months before they came to my house, uh, with FBI agents and a SWAT team, an FBI SWAT team, to arrest a sitting governor as if I was somehow a threat to either run away or hurt somebody. But months before that, Resco had sent a letter, Tony sent a letter to the sentencing judge because he'd been convicted of his issues that had nothing to do with me okay. um, or President Obama. And he said that he was being pressured by the prosecutors to say things about then-Senator Obama and Governor Blagojevich, and he made it clear in his letter that he would not do that because he never was involved in any wrongdoing with either one of us. I met President Obama in the late 1990s when he was, uh, I think, a young state senator, and I was a state rep with Todd running for governor, I mean running for Congress. And uh, Tony was someone I had just met, and he asked me to come to a law office by a lawyer by the name of Allison Davis. And a young lawyer worked in that office, came down to say hello, and I met for the first time a guy by the name of Barack Obama. Years would go by, and he'd move on to, I'd move on to become governor of Illinois. He'd move on to go to the White House, and then I'd fall off the mountain and end up in the shit house. I hope I can say hey, that. Hey, you did that. that off. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> it was something I never expected would happen to me. But, uh, no, I think there may be elements of truth to that. And, you know, Tony uh, raised a lot of money for me and for President Obama through the years and a lot of other people. Um, and I gotta freeze you right there because sure. Todd's giving me the look. Okay. It's time for our amazing Black Facts. Sonia, cue the music! This Black History Month, the WVON Morning Show is proud to present Black Facts. With today's Black Facts. No, she'll dump it. Oh, good, good. Yeah. Todd Stroger. All right. There have been many stories of fighting segregation in the South, but we shouldn't forget the struggles of the North. On Sunday, July 16, 1854, Elizabeth Jennings, a teacher and organist on her way to the first colored church, hailed a streetcar. She did not carry the colored people allowed in this car sign, but the driver pulled over. The conductor blocked her from entering the car. The police were called and sided with the conductor. Jennings' father, a prominent businessman, and other African American leaders formed a legal rights association. With legal guidance from Chester Arthur, a future U.S. president, the case was won and that line was desegregated. Unfortunately, this only affected one line. In 1892, Homer Plessy took a seat in a white trolley car to start a case in New Orleans. That became Plessy v. Ferguson, which created separate but equal as the law of the land. And that is the fact of today. All right, y'all, that's Todd with the amazing black fact of the day. You know you do that so well, Todd. You Thank do that you, so well. You know what? You know I have to wave at you and jump <laughs> Right, and, and I look at the clock and be like, you know what? I'm like a black preacher, right? You know how the black preacher take his clock off, his watch off, put it on the um on the pulpit, and Maybe you know what it means? And, and you know he goes for five minutes more. That's no, exactly me. Right. Hey, y'all, it's the Talk of Chicago. We'll be back with Illinois former Illinois Governor Rob Bogoyevich. All right, Gov, I got questions from from viewers that are you on let me back up. Are you on social media? No. I, okay, so no, the the real on social media now. The real Rob What Bogu is it? What is it? Oh my god. Look, man, we gotta get you Tanil, you gotta consult them on social okay. media. You gotta get a Facebook you got a Twitter account, right? No. So we just saw in the news they said so people are starting accounts in your name. Are Just they? so you know. Yeah, so like lock them down. Get on this good stuff. You got to get on Facebook. You got to get yeah. on Twitter. You got to get on um, Instagram. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions um, that I don't think. First of all, 
Uh, what? No, I think that's a good one for honor. Hmm. What do you think is the uh, goal and for who does he think the justice system, women? Who do you blame in Illinois for corruption? For the corruption in Illinois? I would argue that the state, per, I say that perfect practice makes perfect. I feel like everybody has learned government that gets elected as a way to additionally make money. Yeah, that's right. Right? Like, yeah. I believe that, and I don't even think they think it's wrong. I think right. that they think that business as usual. I am elected official and I'm supposed to have another company of which that when you come to me, I should get paid off of it. Why do people feel like you extorted, you tried to extort the hospital? Explain that to me. What is the difference between what you say and what the perception is? I, I, I hate that charge. I can't, I hate that charge. No, take that. Don't worry about that. Oh, yeah. Because that, that hospital was... was something that's been in my life virtually since I've been alive. My, back in the 1960s when I was growing up, my cousin Eli, 12 years old, little boy, had leukemia, and that's the hospital that he was treated in. That's the hospital that he passed away in in October of 1967. I was 10 when he was 12. He was like a big brother to me, and I loved him. Then I became the congressman of that neighborhood there. It was in Lincoln Park, and always did whatever they asked me to do. Went out of my way to be helpful to that hospital. Then I became governor. I was the same way. And then in 2008, in September, I received a phone call from Dusty Baker, and I'm happy to say all of this on the air. Okay. He called me up because he was the former Cubs manager and had a relationship with Oh, him. Dusty Baker. The oh, yeah. okay. Dusty Baker called me up, and he uh, he was then the manager of the Cincinnati Reds, and they were playing the Milwaukee Brewers. And uh, he called me to tell me about how in September, the pennant race between the Cubs and the Brewers, the Cubs were slightly ahead, but don't worry. You know what, the Brewers are done, you guys, are, the Cubs are going to win the division. But I knew he wasn't calling me just to talk baseball, because he's, he's a Cincinnati Reds manager then. Okay. I said, so Dusty, what are you calling me about? And he told me, that, he reminded me that he had used to be, he was a member of the board of the Children's Memorial Hospital, and that, uh, and that um, he was asked by the CEO there if he'd call, if he can call me and maybe find some money they needed for reimbursement rates for pediatric doctors. And I said, I'll call this guy myself and see what he wants. Okay. And so I called the guy, Magoon, and asked him what the issue was. He told me what it was. He said he needed $8 million to be able to increase the payments for the doctors that take care of the kids. I said, I'll get back to him. At that time, I was reducing big increases that Madigan put in the budget that I, we couldn't balance. And I was really careful to not put myself in a position where I was saying yes to everybody because I'm a soft touch. But I wanted to find the money for that hospital, and I did. And I called that guy on Lagoon and said, we found the money for you. I'm told it won't happen until the 1st of January. And that was it. Some days later, my brother, who's working as, in my office as a fundraiser, calls him up and asks, could you raise, can you do a fundraiser for us? He never connected either one of those, what I was doing for the hospital to a condition that, that if he wants those eight, that million dollars, that he better you know, do a fundraiser. That would make it a crime. There was never anything like that. He merely politely asked, can you do a fundraiser and maybe raise us $25,000? Magoon says, I don't know, I'll get back to you. Then he stopped taking his calls, and that was it. The hospital got the money. There was no shakedown. It's a shakedown if someone promised something or threatened someone in exchange for the for that uh, pediatric money. But, but there wasn't. They convicted me because their jury instructions moved the line. And rather than require an express quid pro quo, what they did was they uh, they said if there's you know any connection between one or the other in the mind of the person and they're getting, they're, they're speculating on what's in my mind that's enough to, to to convict if that standard were applied to everybody in politics they're all there with me in prison. Got it. Yeah, there was no shakedown. They got eight million dollars and I went to prison. Mm. <laughs> right? yeah. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Um, okay. Uh, Governor, how do you plan on working? What do you plan to do to earn a living? Well, I'm, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Want to be a radio host? Todd? I'm uh, just joking. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> People have been trying to steal my job forever, man. <laughs> um, I, I hope I can write another book or two. I'd okay. Like write, I'd like to write a book about my experiences, what I've learned. Okay. You right know, right. how dirty the system is, how okay. rotten it is, and what it does to people. I'd like to write a book about adversity, how you handle the hard times, how you fight through it, and how you keep hope alive. By the way, I want to plug the Jacksons. They 
Because Reverend Jackson's been terrific. You can yeah. twerk whoever you. I'm in yeah. the last segment. Okay. Say whoever, okay. whatever you, okay. whatever you got to get off your chest, you yeah. can. In retrospect, did you wait a minute? Did I hear you have compared yourself to Nelson Mandela? No, sir. That was twisted. And I'd be happy to tell you. That. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Ready? Yep. But I won't stop now. We can stop now. You can hate me now. But I won't stop now. You can hate me now. Don't hate me. Hate the money I see. The coast I buy. You are tuned in to the top of Chicago, 1698. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Taj Stroger. Hey, Todd, I'm sitting here right now thinking to myself, mm -hmm. this could be the motliest crew ever, right? This could be the most hated crew on radio ever. I bet Springfield oh, yeah, is shaking. Got our own story, everybody, so. <laughs> everybody has got a story yeah. of how the Illinois Minotti tried to hurt, harm, or cause danger. But, Governor, I got a question, man. I was looking on social media. First of all, uh, Governor, what's your what's your Twitter handle? Oh, I don't have that. What do you mean you have that, <laughs> Governor? What's your Facebook? Mark, you gotta get them straight, dog. You gotta get them straight. I know a great consultant too. I think they'll take you pro bono. No, I, um, I just literally did that. Yesterday. I got one of these new cell phones, right? Wait, what no. iPhone were we on when you went away? Well, I don't know, and, I, and I, I'm on this new one now, and I, I'm trying to make phone calls, and I'm taking photographs instead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the pictures of my ankles on the floor. Oh, oh my <laughs> goodness. I don't know how to get around on that thing. Governor, um, hey, let me ask a question. Because I, I didn't see this, but I saw it on social media. You know, if it's mm -hmm. on social media, that's what makes it real. Mm -hmm. uh, on social media, they said you compared yourself as a political prisoner to Nelson Mandela. Bro, Nelson Mandela. How could you compare yourself to Nelson Mandela? I could never do that, and I didn't do that, and that was twisted again. Um, no, I said I was a political prisoner. I did say that because I went to prison for practicing politics. However, I never brought up Nelson Mandela in that context. Anderson Cooper did. And he said, how could you compare yourself to Nelson Mandela? And I said, I didn't do that. You did that. However, I'm a great admirer of Nelson Mandela, and through this long, unhappy journey, like his long walk to freedom, I would sometimes think about him, his experiences, and I think about all the years he spent in prison, nearly 27 years, how during his early time in the late 60s, because he was sent to prison in the, like the mid-60s, uh, he lost his son in a car accident. And all the terrible adversity and, and, and heartache that he went through. And I never, ever compare myself to him as the person that he was. However, I drew inspiration from him, from his story, from his strength, his perseverance, and his principles and his ideals. So there's a big difference between saying I'm like him in, the, in another sense, but rather, uh, as it was with me, getting strength by looking at a guy who I, I wanted to try to be more like, because that's how you want to be in life, be a great person, try to be as good as you can, and that was a great man. All right, so then you are, so you. So let's just be clear, we heard that uh -huh. he didn't compare himself to Nelson Mandela, and so Anderson Cooper did, but I feel like most of these interviews, if you are right now, if you... Are if you say anything good about Trump on any liberal right. media outlet, like I heard people saying that you should stay in jail. Like you, if, if Trump was gonna let me out, I stay in jail. Clearly, from someone who has not Never been, been jail, in jail, right? Because yeah, right. I, I just been the county, and I'm like, look, whatever you tell me, I sign. I sign. I'm trying to get out, Governor. But I am anti-Trump, and I would. Be like, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Trump. I'll be doing the commercial too. Yeah. Let me tell you something. It takes a badass like Trump to be able to fix that broken and corrupt and racist criminal justice system. And I know from my own experience, he is determined to do that with his son-in-law Jared Kushner. The first step back was historic, and they're already working on another step to build on the progress of the First Step Act. And there are guys in prison, my friend Pizzo from the west side of Chicago. Pizzo! You got a home! Or high school. Uh -oh. Pizzo went to Orr High School, just got out two weeks before me because of the First Step Act. He did 12 years in prison. He was facing another, I don't know, eight or, eight or nine. 
and through Trump and the First Step Act, Pizza went back home to the west side of Chicago. Let me ask you a question. Yep. Um, so now that you're, so can we count you as a criminal justice reform advocate? God willing, yes, I want to be. I hope to be. I hope people listen to me. Can you call, would, would you support the release now of uh, Larry Hoover and Jeff Fort? Would you would you advocate for them? If it, look, Jeff right. Todd, I know! Look, <laughs> you know, I actually like you, Rod. <laughs> not fall in this trap. <laughs> Say something like, I'll study it. I will study it, but let me tell you a story about this. Go ahead. So, you know, they, I, I'm the only governor in American history ever did time behind the razor wire. Did you know that? They no. put me behind the higher security prison because when you get more than 10 years, that's where you start. So wait, let me uh, ask a question. Yeah, yeah, did you, did you click? Yeah. So I was just watching this uh, this movie the other day, Shot Caller. Did you have to like, you didn't Shot get no caller. tattoos, did you? No. Did you have to get no tattoos? Now who you click up with? The brothers? Or what, 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 how did that work out? I'll tell you exactly how that worked <laughs> out. So I went there. It was a whole new experience. I got there on a Thursday, the 15th of March. 2012, a day for me that will always live in infamy. infamy. Right. Yeah, I had my first meal there that night, and I remember calling Patty because they limit your calls. But I said to her, "Boy, honey, I'll never ever complain about your cooking again." Oh my God! <laughs> but when I got there, I, I I quickly you know made some relationships, and there was an African American guy from East St. Louis named Walter Hill. Okay. And I miss him, and uh, and he he and I became friends, and we were walking on the track in the yard because they they limit your mo your movements there. Again, it's a it, and then I was called in by the SIS, the security, the, uh, the, the, the investigative arm that, that mm -hmm. polices the prison, and they had a long talk with me about walking on the track with a black man because this is a different world you're in now. Everything is segregated. You can't sit with African American guys in the cafeteria. You got to sit with the white guys. You can't sit with the Latinos. You can't it sounds sit like high school. Native Americans. Yeah, it does. <laughs> San Ignatius. Like, like, is that how San Ignatius was? That's pretty, pretty dramatic. I'm not surprised that's from Madigan. Ah! Uh -oh. uh, no, one Madigan, there was probably like four black guys. So. I don't see. And they chased them off. I, I bet they chased them on. Madigan wasn't sitting with no brothers back then. <laughs> he still ain't, but go ahead. And he wouldn't have done it in prison either. But I did, and they called me in, and then uh, and they told me this is not. You can't make this a social experiment, or this is not like the real world, and we got to keep the peace. And so you got to ride with your own. You got to ride with your own, and. Uh, I told them I, re you know, I respected their views, but you know, after a while, everything that's been done to me and everything I live for, I'm not going to do that. I fear nothing. You can't hurt me any more than I've been hurt already. And so I kept hanging around with the brothers. And in the, in the way TV works, you got the white TV room, you got the Latino TV room, and you got the African American TV room. And on Sundays, when we watch football, ask me the question: What TV room did I sit? What TV room did you sit? I sat in there with my brothers. <laughs> that's right, baby. All right. Well, you know what, Governor? I think. You know, I, I guess my question now becomes, uh, what's next? I what hope, do well, you do with your life now? And do you believe that you can be, will you advocate with President Trump for other criminal justice reform uh, changes? God willing, I, I hope there's a role for me there because I know President Trump and Jared Kushner are going to continue to do what they're doing on criminal justice reform. They have done more on criminal justice reform than any administration in history. The 1994 crime bill passed by Democrats, voted by Senator Durbin, was a congressman there. He voted for that 1994 crime bill. That, that crime bill led to the largest increase in mass incarceration in American history. Mass incarceration is the new Jim Crow in America. Ty just talked about Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896, separate but equal. So you got 250 years or so of slavery. This is the experience that your communities face. Then after that, you get separate but equal, and you got 100 years of segregation. Can't, a black man can't go to a lunch counter in North Carolina and sit next to a white guy. And then all of a sudden, we make great progress with Dr. King and the Civil Rights Movement and the Voting Rights Act and Civil Rights Law. And then what do we have in the 1990s? We got a Democratic president, Durbin, and a whole bunch of other Democrats vote for this crime bill that, it, that puts more black people in prison probably than any this bill in, in American history creating a new Jim Crow that the author Michelle Alexander wrote about in her book. Well, they, you've been educated in the book. You, they, they hooked you up in the bing, man. I you, have a lot of time in there to read books and study. And you know what? One of the things I like to work on is this new scarlet letter that you got when you're a felon. Uh -huh. Okay? And that is, instead of that S, you got, you know, you, you got an F on there, and that means felon. Mm -hmm. And so you get out of prison, you've done all that time, you've done way too much time, because they over-sentence non-violent drug offenders in ways that are beyond belief. My friend Joan Air Moore, 26 years, first time non-violent drug offender, the average rapist in America gets a little over four years. Mm. Okay? And it's disproportionately against black people. And so they come out of prison, they do their time, and what's there for them? They got 
that stigma of felon. They can't find jobs. So there's a whole bunch of things out there that I would love to work on. I hope someone will listen to what I have to say. Talk to me about friends and enemies and what you learned. First of all, let me ask, do you regret going at Madigan? Uh, because I, I, I believe, Governor, that this tragedy befell you because you went at Madigan. And I, I see like you done came out swinging still, man. You ain't learned yet? What's up? Well, I mean, do, do you regret, first of all, going at Madigan? No, I, not at all. I, I think he's been a, an obstacle for progress for, like I say, I don't know, around 100 years. He's been blocking stuff. Uh, that can help people because he's taking care of his feet from down there. He takes care of himself and his family. And How his did friends. he get so powerful? And, 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 you know, it was funny because when you were there, I remember there being these rumblings about a democratic revolution. My good friend Ken Duncan was one I love of those Ken people. Duncan. He's a fighter. Uh, he got fought and he got whooped on uh -huh. because he tried to break, he tried to make a move with Governor Rauner. Um, but it seems like. Madigan's control is ironclad, and I gotta go to break. Todd is yeah. giving it to me. Do you, do you think he is a good thing for Illinois? Who Madigan? Yes. Oh God, no. He's retarded progress and set things back for a whole bunch of years, and he's probably kind of the bull Connor of America of Illinois politics. <laughs> he, he does it in a subtle way. He's really clever and crafty, but he's a backroom bull Connor. Did y'all hear that back? Okay, we getting quote. That's news. We'll be back. Traffic and weather. Todd is like, let me get away from this mic. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. More hey, of the morning show. That is the. He is the most feared entity. Yeah. In the. Is it? We were talking about this. I'm gonna move this mic because yeah. again, I got a, I got a quick uh, Go thing for you. Go the reason the speaker is so powerful. Well, for one thing, he's very effective. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to, to win. Oh. But he has also been... <laughs> oh, the, I'm not a fan. The benefactor of people moving out of this area and spreading out over the state. So now there's more Democrats. Uh, the speaker has the machinery to help people in other areas. So as he's grown the Democrats uh, in the House, He's also made a lot of friends and people who don't want to cross him. No, he's made a lot of scared people. He oh, ain't yeah. made no friends. Yeah, that's a good point. Mike McClain is his friend. Bro, ain't McClain's nobody friend. no. He right. ain't got no friends. He don't care about Barack Obama or Nancy Pelosi. That's why we have got no national politics here. Go ahead, Governor. Let him have it. Good. Give me a chance. <laughs> Well, you're still on Facebook, so. Oh, are we? Oh, oh yes. You yeah. mean we can talk here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, look, you got over 500 people watching you live right now. Is that right? Hello. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot. He doesn't know what. Uh, and that's the world famous Mark Vargas right there. Mark, you stay right there. Stand right there. I'm going to turn the camera on you. Hold on. Maze likes to show up. Sorry. He's going to show up his new. Uh, new and how's Cliff Kelly? Cliff oh, is good, man. Oh, good. He does a Saturday show. Oh, good. good that man. is I Mark Vargas. Mark, wave to the camera. That's the guy, man. Let me tell you. First day, all. So this is my MLI plug. Are you? Were you an MLI? All the Latinos start hitting me up like, you gotta hit Mark Vargas. You gotta hit Mark Vargas. He wants to get the governor on your show. And I was like, and then I talked to him. And he's like, I love your show. And I'm like, you watch this crazy show, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, good stuff. Great get, man. We appreciate you. Um, we got to get you on the podcast. You should really, I would love to sit down with you. So we do this thing every week. Right now there is a whole, they're unraveling what's happening in Springfield like right now. Like it's crazy. Like if you read all the federal subpoenas. Is that right? Like Mike McClain is, they talking that. about protecting rapes. They are talking like uh, the Me Too thing. I mean, they are really mm pulling the whole thing apart. Mm -hmm. I used to lobby for with Mike and Mike Noonan and Victor Reyes. Yeah. So I got to see everything right. up in person. Now we ended on bad terms. However, the whole time I was watching everything like have you seen the Sandoval Sandoval indictment? Uh look, they are pulling the whole thing apart. The thing is the press doesn't know what they're seeing. Right, so they don't understand. So we every week I do a podcast and then I take all of the pieces and parts and say, So now you gotta understand that Mike McLean was the 
messenger to business community for right. now. I, like it's man, I'm telling you, you should catch him up on all this stuff yeah. because I'm gonna tell you your insight on it would be great as well as you probably could get some TV work commenting on it regularly because you live through it, yeah. right? Yes. So, uh, did you see Faywell yesterday on Flannery? You no. should talk to Mike. Okay. Oh, yeah. You should watch that. that you awful. should watch Faywell on Flannery. Oh, he agreed right. with you. Oh, oh. Go. Yeah, and I mean, like, Scott Faywell, and I'm like... Oh, that's uh, George Ryan's guy. Huh? Yeah. He yeah. was George Ryan's guy, right? Yeah, that's the right. one. He was the first he one to go system. down. He said it was yeah. real, and he was like, you weren't crazy. Can I ask you about JB, though? Sure, of course. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm so no. sorry I do that, Todd. It's no, okay. no, no. It's a bad oh. design. Okay. <laughs> you are tuned in to the Top Shadow 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host. George Strogen. Hey, see, that's when hip hop goes crazy. When the the, uh, Ooh, the, the beat is from Nate Welcome Jack Back, Carter. Hey, man, that's a great song. That's <laughs> it's a great song. That's great, man. That's Maceo, and you know, that's our musical conductor telling the governor, "We happy you back, man. It's good to have you back in Chicago." Uh, you know what, governor? Um, real quick, do you think you'll still be able to be relevant in Illinois politics? Do you have any political aspirations? I, I ran a poll the other day. I ran a poll. We call them Negro Tific polls, right? Because they're not scientific; they're Negro Tific. It's really it's for black, black people, people. <laughs> right? Because I don't think that most of the stuff out there reflects how our community feels. And I put you up in a head-to-head -head matchup with J.B. Pritzker, right now. Hmm. If the election were held today, and there were about a hundred and thirty comments, you had a hundred and twenty. J.B. had ten. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's that's blacks. Yeah, that's okay. That's the black community, but Governor. First of all, do you have any political aspirations? Are you going to try? I know you can't do it. They put it in the bill. You can't run Illinois. Yeah. Got any federal aspirations? Well, first of all, that's unconstitutional. They pass a bill against one guy. <laughs> can't run. That just shows you how dirty and corrupt they are. They don't want me back to shake that system up and expose those people. You ask me about Madigan, you say, oh, do you have any regrets that you took him on? It's never wrong to do right. And the passive acceptance of in, to, to passively accept uh, an unjust system is to cooperate with it. And so uh, saying that, someone needs to go down there and shake things up. JB, who's a multi-billionaire, he didn't make that money himself. He was born with a silver label in his mouth. Oh, uh, you didn't say a spoon, you said a label. Right, right. but he, uh, he's got a whole bunch of money. He should be down there moving things around and shaking things up because he doesn't need any of those political relationships that you need to be able to you know, raise the campaign funds to fight a system like that. And my advice to him, if he wants to be an effective governor for the people, is he ought to fight that system and not go along with it. Um, having said that, by JP, uh, your question is... What was y'all talking about on that tape, man? I'll tell you about that. Well, what was y'all talking about? Who were the other black people that were hey. le least uh, that were least offensive? I I'm just curious. Who else y'all talking about? Let, let, let me, say, let me say that when you're talking to people you trust, you can say some funky stuff that you're like, man, I'm going to say it to him because <laughs> I ain't going to tell nobody. I'm, I'm not even tripping, but I'm just I'm curious. Go ahead. I heard about that. You know, what? I, you know, I know that he's been saying some mean things about me since I got out, and I understand maybe why he's doing it because I guess he's got that toilet gate issue. Toilet gate? He didn't pay his property tax or something, and he's under federal investigation for this. That's my understanding. Ooh, and so if he's got to be kind to those people who did it to me because he doesn't want what they did to me to do to him, so he's got to say that stuff. Let them do it. Okay. Um, but I, I, I would say I would say this that um, that and I, on that call when he called me he, he wasn't talking racist he was talking politics and and getting an African American replacement into the Senate uh, with Obama I don't think his motivations were at all racist I think the way he may have said it may have come out not so good but I truly don't think he was that way or is that way. I don't. There's other things about him because he's such a guy that wanted to be a somebody and had to get an office someday. He asked me to make him senator. That man, it seemed like he was. Wait a minute. He asked you. Wait, wait. He was conspiring for the Senate seat. Did he think it was going? Sure, he did. A lot of everybody did. They all wanted to be senators. Um, why is everybody playing like there does no deal to be a senator? Like, why is everybody yeah. acting like we don't? Like every job when somebody yeah. gets promoted, 
there's somebody saying, I want that spot, and there's all types of shenanigans. What? I don't understand. First, First of all, the sale of Tennessee was one of the biggest lies in American history. Never. That wasn't that. That was routine political horse trading. The, the appellate court actually reversed that and called it routine political And then they didn't change your sentence, though. No, they didn't. They put me back in 14 <laughs> years. Right, they were like... I'm laughing now, but I wasn't laughing then. Right. right. Yeah. Um, no, I think the whole thing is dirty and corrupt. The whole thing is designed to bury me so that I can't come out here and tell the truth and to keep fighting for the people. And uh, now, thank goodness, because President Trump, again, has the testicular virility. I, I to do remember that. Tough, <laughs> like he did with the first step back, and like he's going to continue to do. And you're going to see. I really believe this. When, when the history of this is written by people who aren't so emotional, because I know so many people just don't like him. But what, here's what history teaches me. Dr. King had his haters. Abraham Lincoln surely had his haters. I, I'm not comparing myself to them by no means. Okay. But I know what it's like to be hated. President Trump has his haters, and Fr Franklin Roosevelt had his haters. The ones that are hated are the ones that are actually doing things. They're the ones who are running up against established systems and changing things and fighting to do things for ordinary people who are not part of those entrenched systems. Trump says there's a swamp in Washington. There is. I was there for six years as a congressman. It's a swamp. I say there's a swamp in Springfield. There is. It's been like that for 100 years since Madigan's been the speaker. Um, so when you fight against that system, you know, they got more of them than there are you, and they fight back. And, and I, think, I think Illinois politics is so corrupt and so dirty that even some of the federal prosecutors, at least in the past, are part of that system, too, and are just as dirty as they are. I'm hoping that Trump can do all this in nine months. Yeah, he's going to win again. Uh, I'm telling you, I think he's going to win. Too. Uh, Governor, let me ask a question. You have been... Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, making WBON the first radio interview. Mark, thank yes, you thank very you. much. Oh, no, thank I you. Think, I think it's an honor. I think that the, I, I really wanted to get some calls because I know people want to talk to you. Um, but I know you're in a rush. If you, if you didn't have to leave, I'd let you take some calls. Um, but, Governor, do you think um, that you maybe should have chilled a little bit? before you hit the media tour. I mean, it's clear you still got the gift, man. Yeah. It's still like you got the gift of gab. It's like people are, but like, did you spend some time with the, the wife or did Patty just say, I know who my husband is and I gotta let him be, you gotta be me? I'm Patty is such a, she's an angel. I'm blessed to have walked through life with her. What a gracious journey it's been. You know, when I was arrested and then when I got convicted, Vegas did odds. And she had eyes on whether she'd stay. Whoa! Yeah. Dang. She, and, really, she's a champ, though. And they were betting against her staying with me. She is and, a champ. And I told her the day that I got the 14 year sentence, I told her, you know, you're still young. Don't wait for me. Ooh. You know, I, I love you like crazy, and I, 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 I hope you're away, but don't feel any pressure. You got your life to live. And, and she was just true blue and devoted and has stayed. So that's why I didn't answer your question about running for office. Because if she's listening to this and she heard me say <laughs> she may not stay. <laughs> uh oh. So, guys, I think we got a hint there. Governor, um, do you got any shout outs? Do you got any people you want to yes. send some love to or some people you want to say F you to? Either one. Give no, them I want to do a shout out to Reverend Jesse Jackson, Ooh, cool. my former uh, colleague in Congress, and my friend Jesse Jackson Jr. They were terrific how they helped me um, through this process. You know, Reverend Jackson and I, 20 years ago, went to Serbia where my father came from. You remember that during the war, and we were able to get three U.S. soldiers out of prison. We were bombing that country, and these guys were taken prisoner, U.S. Right. Army men. Uh -huh. And uh, the Reverend was magnificent then. I was the, I think I get best supporting actor, but he was the principal player. And I told him when I, moments after I was finally released, I was still in Denver, going to the airport, and I called him at Jesse Jr., and I thanked him for everything. And I told him how, you know, Reverend, 20 years ago when we did that, got those guys out of, out of prison and brought them home to their families. Never could I have imagined that mm. 20 years later you'd be doing it again, but only this time you'd be getting my ass out of prison. And, uh, <laughs> and, he, you know, and, he, and, he, and he was very instrumental in doing this. And so I, I'm extremely grateful to him. I'm grateful to Reverend Al Sharpton, who, who mm. signed a letter urging President Trump to send me home. Uh, Dr. Brazier at the Apostolic Baptist Church has been so kind to my family. Uh, there's just so many people. Congressman Danny Davis, Congressman Bobby Rush, my old friends in Congress, excellent people. Even Robin Kelly, I didn't know her as well, but she was very kind and was willing to, to be supportive. So uh, Patty and I and Amy and Annie, our little family, we just have so much love in our heart for so many people who didn't run away from us. And it's a very lonely experience. This has been a long and happy journey for all of us. But, you know, you can either look at the negative or you can look at the positive. And we embrace the positive. And we've seen so much love and kindness from so many people, 
and it just reinforces to me the belief that ultimately, at the end of the day, most people are good, and what a great thing it is to do good things for good people. Man, I'm gonna tell you something. See, Todd, that's how you won the last two times, right? <laughs> it's like you still got the uh, gift, Dub. You yeah, still got the gift. Um, we want to tell you, welcome back. You always have a spot at the WVOM Morning Show. Uh, you, we want you to come back, get yourself acclimated. Love to have you on the podcast. But if there are things, anything you want to feel like you want to get out, Mark, you got my number. Governor, I got to get yours. Let's make sure that this is not the last time. Hey, y'all, it Thank is you. Governor Rob Bogoyevich right here in the WV, on the WVOM Morning Show. I went over a little bit, but sometimes when you get a big get, you got to get the big get. We'll be back at the traffic and the weather. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the... It's Serbo, Serbo Croatian. They now, you know you can stay as long as you want. I know you're in that. That means got me doing something else, right? Oh, I don't know. But come can on. I come back? You can come back yeah. whenever you want oh, to come man. back. I yeah. think that there's some time. You, you, you're you in a hurry. You got you another spot? Do you want to stand for a little longer? Whatever you think. It's up to you. Yeah, let's take a couple okay. calls. I think if you take a couple yeah. calls, people would like to talk Beautiful. to you, and I think yeah. that'll be a good, yeah. a good thing. And then, thank you. you. Right. Yes, a little bit. I'm gonna just tell people to take off. Look, y'all, y'all more than welcome to call. You are more than welcome to call in. I know. Yeah, sister Zakia, you better call in. And I can take just we. That's all. I can say coup d'état. I should say that there. Yeah. Uh, will you apply? To uh, the that board to, to get your law license. ARDC. Up? I doubt it. I'm not interested in that. No, and I'm, I'm not interested. Are you gonna? Are you, so, Governor? How will you? Will you? Do you anticipate yourself being a factor? Keep her here. Tell Amisha she get. T- we'll call her once we're done with the governor. Okay. Do you think you'll be relevant this political cycle? We were fighting over this at. Um, Oh, we were watching the Deontay Wilder fight. I actually started. Yeah, who won that fight? Did he uh, win Deontay Wilder? Deontay got his ass kicked. Are you kidding me? Kicked. Fear are Nick you, Fury kicked his are ass. You I me? literally started to text Mark and say, "Do you guys want to come over and watch the fight?" Because I, I want to come like, over. Really? I'm well, telling you. I, look, I was like, I started to text him. I, I wanted to like, watch that fight, but you know, I live in a house with all girls. Oh my so god! You should have came I over. over. I, I lost my seniority. <laughs> <laughs> they like, look, you know. Um, what was I telling you? Oh, so I was watching the fight, and we were arguing because I had a bunch of, um, there were some JB staffers there oh. and some state reps, and the JB staffers were here. Todd, let's get oh, everybody. Just, yeah, I'll just get everybody in. So if you all don't move away, oh, yeah. and if you stay there, then I can keep everybody in the shop. Uh, but can we it, were. Can they hear us actually? Yeah, oh, they're hearing, hello. watching. So this is a live camera. And look, Todd, you're not. Yeah, let me show you. <laughs> That's so oh, funny. Yeah. No. Hey, you know, they start out with one little camera. This is you right three. now. Whoa. This is what they're seeing, right? So yeah. you are. This is a little about a twenty second delay. I see. But you're live, and so. So, you see in the uh, studio? Yeah. There's a camera on Sonya too. Oh. Right. Okay. She so. Got her own light. <laughs> like here's the thing, Governor. Like yeah. and now, like with the social media, and with like this, you. A lot. You don't have to rely on the media to tell your story. Right. You can go live Beautiful. to the world, and that's how Trump won. Exactly. Actually, he it's like he said, "Okay, if you're never going to give me fair coverage, right. this is actually how Madigan wasn't able to kill me." Was because after the Ken Duncan thing, they took me from like thirty grand a month to like three. Like they were like, "No clients, no nothing. Don't touch them." Hmm. But I would be like right here, like. This is what they're doing, yeah. and if they and so people could see, um, we were we were arguing though this weekend about your relevance, mm. right? Like because again, most of them were not even political, or like they came in on like the guy I was with came in during Pat Quinn, right? So I became Pat Quinn's field director for the election after I worked on your election through Dick Mel oh, wow. and Walter Burnett, yeah. The first your when you won against Roland, that's how I got well. Yeah. Anyway, the point being, what do you do? You play it plan on playing in this election cycle at all? Do you plan on being a vocal, or do you plan on what's like? Where do you plan on doing? I, I have given no thought to that whatsoever. I, I, my priority right now is actually to try to, you know, get reacquainted with my family, and uh, and and figure out a livelihood. 
and push criminal justice reform and take it and take the experiences that I've had and try to turn that into something positive and good and helpful. So that's where I, my priority priority is. I, I don't know. I, I don't see myself playing any kind of political role in the short term anyway. Okay. All right. But who knows? I mean, if somebody asks me a question, I'm the best I can to answer it. All right. You should do. Um, I think you should do Flannery. Uh -huh. Like you should do his Sunday morning show because I mean, I think you have a great story. Fox is actually trying to appeal to black, 32, mm -hmm. is trying to appeal to black people and you have a black appeal. I, I liken you to Eminem just a little bit, which is... He's, he's a white guy. Huh? Yeah, he's a white guy, yeah, a white rapper. but rapper. Good, that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but he can, he, he can deliver certain messages to white folks that they would not hear from black people, yes. right? I think that you have a space there. I think that the instinct of white folks because of Trump is to be like just to immediately marginalize you because if they're like so crazily blinded that if it's Trump involved that they're just like oh my god it's the worst thing ever. But I do think you um, have a unique opportunity to tell a story from the perspective like when you say you sat in the TV room with the brothers yeah, I did. I but it. at the same time being able to go communicate those experiences. I think that there's going to be a lot of people that will say that's disingenuous, mm -hmm. right? They will try and say, who the fuck are you to be talking about criminal justice reform when you didn't? And, and all of those arguments are coming out now, right? right? right. Which is the, the people who don't want you to be able to be credible because they do see that you do have some stick in the black community want to start undercutting. So what you see is that's how... Anderson Cooper is asking you about clemency in fucking Illinois. Right. Like, when have you cared about clemency in right. Illinois? Right. But now that here is this vocal person who has some stick in the black space, they're like, start cutting it down now. Yeah. Start cutting it down now. So I, I, I was curious, did you plan on getting involved? But you said not really politically. I think that when you said you, though, are trying to get reacquainted with your family, like, that is probably what made everybody right here go oh <laughs> right but I think that's huge how is it coming like what what was that like like Jesus like eight years your kids are grown gone ones and how did that how is that yeah well it's uh, I, again I I gotta get to know them again but more than that they need to get to know me I mm -hmm. think it, that it's harder for them than it is for me it's frankly very easy for me I just love my kids my little Annie was eight years old when I left, and she's 16 now. She's a very different person than that little girl that mm. that I say goodbye to, I kiss goodbye yeah. to, and hug goodbye to. Yeah, right? my girl's 16, and I, yeah. And, and think about it. It's huge. It's remarkable. Yeah. And, you know, they're so different. I would just say, yeah. when you're doing the interviews, yeah. I think you do a good job, and I'm not a Trump guy, but don't let them do it and not off the square, because that's what they're going to try to do in the world. Yeah. I always try to yeah. deflect you to something that you don't want to talk about. <laughs> Man, it's good to see you, Todd. Always like that. Wow. He's in the front row well, there, for I, sure. I, I'm used to bad uh, reporters. I know that. Yes, of course you are. You were up in a high place, too. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. When the tears I cry, uh, so keep on swimming inside. Baby, it ain't over till it's over. So many tears inside, keep a love alive. Baby, it ain't over till it's over. You are tuned in to the Top of Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my clothes Todd Stranger. But hey, Maze, I'm going to say something racist. Say something racist? You black. You can't be racist. I'm going to say, Governor, you should be able to hear that because uh, it's Lily Kravitz. Yeah, no, I know it's a great song. <laughs> Mary to Lisa Bonet, right? Uh, uh, uh oh, uh oh, you gotta watch it. I was had a crush on her. It didn't, oh, yeah. Everybody had a crush on yeah, her yeah. at some point, right? And um, let me tell you what. So... Ray, if you ever had a crush on Lisa Bonet, watch Ray Donovan. Okay? Oh, she's in that? What is that? Uh, Ray, yeah. <laughs> Ray Donovan is the show on Showtime. Oh. And let me just tell you, 
You thought you got something in Angel Heart? Yeah, that was Lordy good. B, she went all the way. Are you kidding me? All the, yeah, yeah. Can you get that on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> you can get everything on I'm your phone. That. I'm learning. <laughs> you can get you everything. From a <laughs> 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 I'm joking, of course. Uh, let me say this. I gotta say what's up to Samantha Thomas in the newsroom, as well as my musical conductor, uh, Sonia Escobar. Guys, we asked the governor to stay for a minute because um, I do think that it is important that he hear from. Uh, the callers, the listeners. Uh, you know, if I when you got out, you dominated my show for three days. Nobody dominates my show for three <laughs> days. This is my show, Maze Jackson. I'm the star here, right? That's that's how I just one day when I'm super famous, be different. But it was like when you got out, you dominated the phone lines. I couldn't get off the subject. So, Governor, I thought it might be good for us to take some phone calls. You cool with taking a few call, phone I calls? Love, I love to. All right, you, you all right? Let's go to the phone lines. I gotta start with this one. I got to start with Sister Zakia, because Sister Zakia, boy, Sister Zakia went all the way, and, and she told everybody off who had a problem with you. Sister Zakia, you got him on the live line, Governor Rob Bogoyevich. What's up? Uh, good morning, Todd. Good morning, Good Mike. morning. Good morning. And welcome home, Governor Bogoyevich. You look happy. <laughs> Thank you, Zakia. I am happy. I'm blessed. You know, I'm not going to... I know you're blessed. Yes. Thank you for and, calling. And, oh, not a problem. There are two quick things right quick. I want to let you know, I'm the black lady who, during your trial, I'm the lady who stood outside and you would come over and greet me every time. Remember? You would greet me and hug me, and the racist media cut that out in a heartbeat. They didn't want to show you hugging a beautiful black woman. I remember you as a beautiful black woman. That's why I hugged you. <laughs> I also sent a letter. Patty took my letter. I wrote a letter on your behalf as well. And I sent my letter. Patty had my letter and took it in. So I just want to say, may Allah bless you and keep you and your family safe and strong and keep on telling the truth and keep on fighting for people as well as black people. Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Zakia. God bless you. It's so nice to hear from you. Hey, all right, sisters and let's go up. Next up is Marsha. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. You got the... Did you hang up on me, Marsha? <laughs> Let me go to Willie Preston. The Willie Preston on the southwest side. So, um, thanks for doing this interview, mate. It was terrific. Um, governor, you know, I just want to say, when you first got elected to governor, I had just gotten to age where I could vote, and you back then was the Democratic hero, taking the state back over for Democrats. And I really appreciate a lot of what you've done while in office. And so I consider myself a blogocrat. So I would like to say that I would wanna wonder if you would ever consider, um, and please smooth talk Patty, <laughs> consider challenging Tammy Duckworth uh, for the Senate. And wouldn't it be life at full circle if you were to be back taking that office, which they falsely accuse you of trying to sell? Ooh. That would be life full circle. Well, I tell you something, that'd be quite a story, wouldn't it, uh, Willie? Um, well, we got a lot of people on this side of town that will be ready to volunteer, and I'll be leading the charge in my area. I guarantee it. It'll happen. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know, Tammy used to work for me. She was, uh, I appointed her as the Director of, Director of Veterans Affairs. Mm -hmm. um, but she's not, she's not running for re-election in the near term, is she? Uh, no, she yeah. get them back around, though. Yeah. By the time you get acclimated. Come on, let me ask a question. Yes. You, do you feel like you were institutionalized? Real good question. I don't think so, and I, I fought against that. Okay. That's a great question. Only those of us who've been in. Because you said I got. I was when they told you you were going to get released. I'm taking your calls. Yeah. I just had to ask that because yeah. you said when you were about to get released, you were like, I was wondering if I could get a run in, and I felt like, man, is that yeah. the? Do you line, line up your toothbrush and do you still wipe the toilet? You know, like. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, there is that. Right. I'm saying, yeah. do you do, exactly? Well, there is that. That's right, and, I, and and that's part of the adjustment at home. You know, there's certain things that I've been doing for a long time, right? I keep finding myself saying, I gotta get this done before four o'clock because that's when they're gonna count us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They bring you in and you get counted. Um, so uh, in some ways, yes, but I'll tell you how I fought against it. I, I, I love ice cream. I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I love it. I make ice cream, by the way. Oh. But I will, every Wednesday they let you buy a little pint of ice cream. You can buy that every Wednesday. And I never let myself do that as much as I wanted to. I just wasn't going to eat something that I loved so much that wasn't going to make me happy anyway. It wasn't going to change the unhappiness of being there. And I, every day was a day that I, I set goals for myself. There were physical fitness goals. There were books to read. And I really threw myself into the Bible in a way that I never did before. So this, in many ways, was a blessing. 
but I, I, I think I've been pretty good at not letting that happen. Let me tell you, you, you mentioned the Bible, I'm a preacher's kid. So yeah. you know what I mentioned about you the other day? I mm -hmm. said you were the story of David and Bathsheba. So yes, I love that. Right? Well, no Bathsheba, my story. Well, but no, yeah. the Bathsheba was the governor's office. Oh, okay, very so good. So if you think about, you were, you know, that your buddy was watching the, the office of the governor. He wanted to be appointed one day. Yeah. They sent you off to jail, and he became, it's, it's, a, it's a long story to tell. But anyway, let me go to Jay. Jay, you're on top of Chicago, 1690. You know where I'm going with that. Jay, you're on top of Chicago. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Jay. How are you? All right. Welcome home. Thank you, my friend. God bless you. You too. I got one question. Oh yeah. No kidding. Thank you. What what was what was they really? What did they really send you for? It wasn't for what they said. That was a bunch of malarkey. I can't understand. What was the purpose of you even going to jail? I think it was to bury me and bury the truth with me. That's the only way to explain a 14-year sentence when there were no victims. This was all conversations, and they were legal. So I think it was that, Jay, and I think maybe there's more people behind what happened than what uh, what we see in the news. Oh, okay. Let's go to Anita. Anita, you're on top of Chicago. Anita? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. H happy, uh, happy New Year, and, and happy, everybody's happy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So happy for you and your wife. Oh. And uh, I'm so sorry that this happened, and I was the one that would call Cliff Kelly's show when you were gone and, and tell them to make sure that we get you out and that this is wrong and this was a setup. You were so strong that the Republican Party just could not have you there and I hope you and Congressman Jesse Jackson Jr. who was my congressman at the time that you work together and you stay strong and you keep Patty involved and get Cliff Kelly with you to help you out you know when you need to you know speak and politically you know, be a little savvy out there and maybe they won't be able to take you, you know, and we'll have a little uh, person there to represent you like Cliff to uh, keep it all straight for us. But don't give up and keep working with Jesse Jackson Jr. and we're going to get all this straightened out in the end. Thank well you, said. Anita. Well uh, said, Anita. Thank you. Cliff Kelly, God bless him. I can't wait to see man, him. Man, we got to get him. You know what? We gotta, you know, we got to get you. You said you like ice cream, too? We got to get you some Sean Michelle's. We okay. gotta get him some Sean Michelle's ice cream. Let's make sure he's straight. Last one, Carolyn, you're on top of Chicago, 1690. Is that Carolyn Ruff? Yes, this is Carolyn Ruff, and I am so happy that the governor is home. I I spoke with him. I, I was there when he uh, had his press conference. I'm the lady that he got the blood on the side of my face. And he's like, oh, I got blood on you. I said, oh, don't worry about it. I'm just happy that you're all. And I, I, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm just excited. I don't know what to do. But welcome home, Governor. We love you and your family. And hopefully one day you will come to push. All right. I can't wait. Thank you so much. I'm sorry about that blood. <laughs> you know what? You had a lot. Of, you know, you had to learn to shave with the good razor, right? Because yeah. them them plastic jailhouse razors stay not the bomb. No sir. All right, Governor. Um, I am going to. I know you got to go. Mark is giving me the high sign. Uh, Governor, anything? Any last? Not last words, because we expect that you'll be back regularly. Actually, uh, but what I want you to do is, if you got anything you want to say to anybody before we go, I just want to say to all your listeners, thank you for your warmth and, and support and the love that my wife Patty and I and our daughters Amy and Amy have always felt in the African American community and I would say to borrow from the Bible Genesis chapter 50 the story of Joseph he was sent to prison for something he didn't do his brother sold him into slavery he became the prime minister of Egypt the governor of Egypt that's what happened after he got out of prison and those brothers were scared and worried when they saw their little brother who they did that to and when they realized he was a man on a high mount with a lot of power they were afraid he said to them don't you worry because what you meant for evil God meant for good and I truly believe, I truly believe there will be, there was purpose behind what happened. And I think, I think the best is yet to come. Oh, that's the way to be. That last question. Governor, uh -huh. how are you going to stay gray you going back to black? <laughs> well, stay gray, bro. That's uh -huh. why you got Anderson all mad. You stole uh -huh. his thunder. But go ahead. Well, Mace, first of all, it was never black. It was Sable Brown, number 47D. <laughs> 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 hey y'all, he has still got it y'all. You can say what you want. 
Uh, but it is Governor Rob Bogoyevich back. We are glad you're back. And, man, make sure this is not the last time we're here. Stop Chicago 1690. We'll be back after traffic and the weather. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. Some kind of computer thing. He says there's 8,000 people that pop up every once okay. in a while. All right. It's a question and answer, they call it. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he wouldn't get up this early. Huh? He wouldn't get up this early. Oh, he he already asked you himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Good to man, see you, uh, good stuff. Good I want to definitely take pictures, all that stuff. This is Mark. better than politics. Anything we can. It is actually. Can be it's something. Come on, let's take pictures. <laughs> <here. laughs> Except I missed those big stakes and I can't afford them. How are you? Instagram. Instagram. Mark, Mark. So, are you going to get them on social? Yeah. How much longer I got some?
<laughs> Are we on air? Uh, we're, yeah. So I try, you know, so cry, ha, ha. return of the mind, return of the mind. Here I am, turn on. You are tuned into the Top Chicago. 1690 AM, y'all. We just had the biggest get of the year. It is former Illinois Governor Rob Goyevich. Hey, y'all. Can I tell you something? I, I think like he's. St- I think he still got it, Todd. Oh no, he still got it. Uh, Todd, I, I, I really no. I, I think the governor still has it. I mean, I think like, you know, like, remember when I asked you was he institutionalized? Right. And he came in and he said, you know, I think he's politically institutionalized. Right? Like he sat down, he did the whole, well, you know, Todd, and the I I felt like this could be 2002 again. Like, I, why do I feel like if he sat down right here, right now, and started a debate, that he could he 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 would win? You, you know, Todd, did he did he um do you think that he answered the question on why now with criminal justice reform? What you mean? Remember when how everybody, because you know, one of the things I want to do is make sure that it wasn't like a, a cream puff interview, but I didn't feel like I wanted to be hostile, right? And so I felt like the question, remember when, um, well, first of all, I thought we cleared up some stuff because remember they said that uh, people were saying on social media that he compared himself to Nelson Mandela. Right. And he was like, that's not what I said. Said he was inspired by Anderson Cooper. Said you comparing yourself. Uh, criminal. His answer. You gotta be very careful when you when, when you, you invoke. Mention, yeah. When you invoke any of those civil rights heroes. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What did you think about his his why criminal justice reform is so important to him now? When he did not necessarily uh, make it a priority when he was the governor. I got an answer for that. And you don't think about. Uh, hmm? fire retention until your house burns down. I mean, you know. Right. And I think it's like, it's just like all the people who talk, who were saying that, how many letters do you write a week? Talk to, I mean, like, when your friends go away, do you still keep up with them? Do you worry about, how, not a lot of people spend too much time worrying about people going away unless they're their actual family. True that. And until you have a realistic re- experience. Like, you don't know to fight for criminal justice reform until you be like how terrible it actually could be. Because you know, quite frankly, my, uh, my personal experience is none. It's well, it's not us. It's actually uh, orange is the new black. That's the close. Like <laughs> <laughs> hey man, um, I, you know what I want to do? I want to take listener reaction to the interview. That's what I want to do for the rest of the show. I must take. Did Jay just go away? Um, this is what I'm gonna do. Todd, we are going to, I'm going to wrap this segment up, then we're going to come back, and I'm going to ask you all to take this phone number down, 312-374-8130, 312-374-8130. I want you to give us a call and react to the Governor Rob Bogoyevich interview. You got some thoughts, Todd, you want to share? Oh, I thought it was. Well, let's do it. Nah, that, no, no, don't do it now. Save it till after yeah, traffic. Quick. That's because like we just we went late. <laughs> oh, okay. On the first break, so we went. No, nah, uh, nope. We're gonna go and then we'll do it right when we come back. Stop Chicago. I want listener response to Governor Rob Bogoyevich first radio interview and Facebook Live. It was funny. He was like, "Wait, that looks like a telephone. It's a camera." <laughs> Wait, I'm on this. It was hilarious. Some of the things we'll talk about it all when we come back. <laughs> he was like, "I don't know what iPhone it was when I went to jail." Yeah. Right. You know, being the governor, he probably didn't really uh, touch his phone much anyway. So he probably hasn't really been fooling around with a phone for like 12 years. (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. Take a moment, share the broadcast, share the broadcast, share the broadcast. I think I should cut that interview and make it just a standalone interview. Uh, to Neil, hey, I told him we was going to do a ride welcome back party. He was like, he down. But the other thing was, he was very insecure, they said. What? He was very insecure. You mean just a minute ago? Period. Like, he was like, do people, he like, he don't know how people will respond to him. Like, even on his first press conference, he was like, will they even like me? You don't know what the hell's going to happen. Yeah, you sure don't. And I cry. I, I, I. Todd and Sonya, y'all got the camera. Return of the man. Yeah, I thought that was a very, very good interview. Um, he, <laughs> he's uh, he's still the same guy. Still, uh, you know. Still can talk and still got his, um, maybe a little subdued a little bit, but, you know, fiery. I saw him on, I must have seen him at least three times during, his, since the moment of his, um, him speaking at his home. Of course, that Anderson Cooper thing was kind of strange. Just craziness. So. I did watch Chicago tonight where they talked about him. And, and they pretty much talked about him bad, you know. But nah, I expect that out of the, the news. Um, one thing he, he's always been full of himself. He didn't know how to hold back a little bit. And, you know, as much as he doesn't like like the speaker and what's going on, I think he was fighting so much that sometimes you still, even when you're fighting, when you are an elected official, it's like what Mage was saying earlier about Cullerton, is when there's dissent and that's when you're able to create more things because each side wants something. So. You've got to respect that they've got some power, and then you use that where, look, I'm going to give a little of this, and you're going to give a little of this. That's how we're going to get things done. Emo Jones, I always said it's good to be uh, feared more than loved, but when there's as I say, elephants fighting elephants, I'm so crazy. I started to ask you, you got to be careful. You knock the whole forest down. I should have taken a selfie so I could put it on my page. I forgot. I never was a selfie guy. I got a picture with me, I took, it was me, him, and Monique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said you never turn away. You lied to me. Return of the man. Return of the huh? Mm. Tell her we'll call her tomorrow. Yep. Here I am. What y'all think? I just need for y'all to understand. I'm not mad, and I feel like I'm not doing the white people. Oh my God. You're a terrible person. Like, damn, the dude yeah. did jail for eight years. Yeah. So, Never like, come back again. Right. It is like Anderson Cooper. Like, I just think it's funny to me that everybody wants us to be mad. It's like, I ain't. That was a soft interview. Why, Cliff? Because I wasn't screaming. Right. See, it's like. Yeah, people think you have to be. Uh, What's wrong with you? Yeah, right. I, I said, man, why do people. What did you learn? Why do people think you're not genuine? What what is it right? Like you ask them if you don't scream and become combative, yeah. then it's like it was. Come on, Cliff, I can't wait to take your ass. <laughs> mm. 
Who gives a flying patoot, Howard? Love for me. Thirty minutes going down the table. Who is that? Staying safe on the L. Oh, we get our hair cut at the same barbershop. Oh, really? Yep. I like those guys. Hmm. I like them too. Did you learn anything from the interview? Was there anything that we did different that the other people did? <laughs> did I miss block those interviews? Pardon me, I overslept. Okay, well then, we don't need you to tell us that. Shit, rewind. I didn't want to see an argument, I wanted to see an interview. I well, know that. Interview was enlightening, that's good. Thanks, man. You are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago, 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Tosh Troja. Ty, give us a call. Tell the people, give us a call. 312-374-8130. Tell us what you thought about the Blago Bull Goya bitch interview. Let's go to Cliff. Cliff, you're on the Talk of Chicago, 1690. Cliff. Cliff, what's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Take us off mute, mute Cliff. Because, see, Cliff said that was a soft interview. You know, I was wondering, like, when people say it's soft, is it soft because I didn't scream at him? Because, I mean, I did ask him, like, are you, you know, I feel like I asked the tough questions. I did, but I learned a new interview trick. Ask the tough questions with a smile. Right? So when you ask the tough questions with a smile, then they don't feel hostile. Right. Let's go to Jay. Jay, you on the talk of Chicago, sixteen nine. Jay, Jay. Thank you, A good interview. And by the way, this is a shout out to Governor Bogoyevich. If you're listening, your next interview to those other people is going to be a true lions. Then they will not respect you like the Sanctuary Radio WVN was. So just think about that. Two questions for you, May. One that you said you were going to ask, you did not ask, was I want to find out what was the rest of the tape, particularly what it was that uh, him and uh, in their draws. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, <laughs> JV, what uh, they were talking yeah, about. Yeah. Did yeah. you notice that? I think I, you know, I was trying to be instigatory, right? I was. I did ask the question, but I think mm -hmm. he he's trying to still be cool, with JB. Like I don't I think. Yeah, don't pick a fight. Don't no need to pick a fight with a billionaire, right? No, you know? yeah, no fight with that. But the, uh, the personal question was this: Governor Ryan, did he get railroaded? And he don't even have a wife to go home to. And we got to remember that he too did a lot for us. I hope that the two get together. As a tag team that we can both defend. Oh, you so, know what? George Ryan. Hey, man, you know what? That's a great uh, point, Jay. And I do think that, um, I think that's a great point. And I think I want to get George Ryan now, too. Exactly. I mean, I do think together. we could, because again, I think we could really have a, cr a corruption conversation. We might be able to get some people together and really have a real substantive conversation. Do you notice, though, that the people that 
seem to at least attempt to be cool with black folks wound up in jail and the ones who just said screw y'all didn't the one thing I can say is this he truly now has been through a true desert he is a person who in the same sense as Father Flager we can come to, come to respect him as of right now that comes down to that so you know we have our differences made well put today you did a well good job thank okay. you Jay I appreciate it I was trying to make sure that I didn't get too geek but I wanted to make sure I, mean, I, I still think that Governor McGoyevich regardless of what you say not you but people say I think he while he was in office was a friend to the black community I just do Melinda you're on top of Chicago 1690 thank you for taking my call and also, I want to say thank you for giving him that platform and that outlet that was so beautiful. He, to me, he seemed as humble as he was before he went in there because I met him personally. He was humble. He had that, uh, that loving spirit toward black people. And I'd like to also say I like that question you asked uh, how did, you know, about the institutionalized and how he forgot, you know, about time and everything. Oh, I got to hurry up and do this before 4 o'clock. And then I want to say I have a problem with uh, other politicians uh, saying, hey, he needed to stay and keep him in jail. I mean, you know, if you're living in a glass house, don't throw no rock. And when you dig one grave, you better dig one for yourself. Mm. That's all I got to say, and thank you so much. Thank you, Belinda. I, you know what, y'all? I feel like I'm not, if you come to me and you asking me to get on and be mad at everybody, I mean, I'm saying brother came home from eight years. I ain't really, he, you know what? I'm not getting ready to start over and be mad. You ask for redemption. It's like the same people ask for redemption want to say, don't want to give redemption. Right? It's like, it only counts when it's your friend. Right. Right? It only counts when it's your friend. Let's go to Karen. Karen, you on top Chicago, 1690. Well, good morning, kings and queens. Good morning, Listen. Sister Karen. I read the book, and, you know, I'm glad he's out because he helped me with a lot of cats um, that went to prison. But he contradicted his entire book. I don't know if anybody else read the book, but I'm curious to know what's really going on. But I just want to say this. Of course, we don't want to say anyone doing time for something that they really didn't do. But I got a question to my black sisters and brothers. When are we going to get excited and gun hold off of our men and women that's gone to prison and our, our women that had to take care of their families? When are we going to go to nine yards? I know a sister that's calling in that's excited over this man, and she pushed a man that went to prison for 30 years when he was, ch when he was a child up under the rock. When are we going to get excited over us? I'm happy that he's out. I hope he helps toward the black race, but I want us to get excited over us. Love you. Have a great day. I, I mean, I have a great day every day. I think I'm excited over us all the time. Um, like, I think that, like, we can walk and chew gum. And it's like, you can pick, I'm happy for that one. I, I'm enjoying the Vagoyevich, because I'm enjoying Vagoyevich being out just because all the flux he putting white folks through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Like, the, like that's, that's, that's the biggest part of my joy. And I don't think that the other people is making people get all twisted up. Now, I think that when people come and call me and tell me about stories and things that they want to share, if they put in a, a form, like I do, man, I'm not going to go back. Let's go to Brother Hall. Brother Hall, you know, let me go back up. Maurice. Maurice, you're on top of Chicago, 1690. Maurice, turn that radio down. I think we're doing a dangerous job of uh, kind of normalizing this Trumpocrat, and I think we need to walk a fine line and figure out where he really stands for the black people. It's not like he had that much policy going on back then when he was governor for black and brown communities. And I think we should be more conscious about how we um, align ourselves with him now. I, I, let me say this. I think we got to be careful when black folks start talking about black and brown. That's what I think we got to be careful of. Because we ain't who we align with. Let's align with who align with us. I don't think that Bogoyevich is anybody's savior. That's not the point. Right? I think y'all, I think you all are m missing a piece of it. But I, I just think with the Bogoyevich thing, I think that for those of us that have watched politics in Illinois, and you see this man got 14 years for what people do every day, yeah. Let's go to Brother Hall. Brother Hall, you're on top of Chicago, 16 man. Yeah, man, thank you. First of all, I appreciate that interview. That was a good interview, brother. Forget what everybody else was talking about. I think, and I know Bogorovich is listening, 
you need to stay, you need to do your interviews on black radio, bro. <laughs> you know, the mother folks don't care nothing about it until your last call of Maurice. Come on, Maurice. What has the governor now and other governors have done for us? Nothing. Nothing. Actually, I appreciate him because my wife, as you know, is disabled, has aphasia from complications of a stroke. And it was him that gave my wife that free pass. It certainly helped us uh, and a whole lot of other things, even for my grandkids. So, you know, uh, you know I think Begorovich done a great job in Illinois. He didn't do no more than what these other ones are doing. I still am. And lastly, hopefully y'all will find a way to give him a spot. He needs to be a commentary or a comment, commentator or something, bro, because I think he got a lot to talk about. I think he do too. And if he don't get it here, I'm going to get him one on my podcast. Hey, y'all, this is Chicago 1690. We'll be back with more reaction to Rob Bogoyevich, and we'll wrap this bad boy up. It's Top Chicago 1690. More of the morning show with Mays Jackson. Ouch. Uh, uh, I cord. Uh, my core is falling apart. I gotta work on my core. Hey. Todd, you got the camera. Talk to the people. Today is Lundy, bro. I was thinking about putting Carrie on a plane. I'm saying, let's go to Mardi Gras and come back. Let's come back tomorrow. <laughs> Jump on a plane like right now. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Lundigra, Lundigra is uh, is Monday, Fat Monday, and there are things going on like the, uh, the Zulu uh, people crew. getting killed on these floats these this month. Falling off floats, maybe. I would love to. Um, I want to go to New Orleans with somebody who knows how to do New Orleans. Right, like, put me on a like a three day, like don't like eat breakfast. You know, eat, go see this, go do that, go see this, hear music. I feel like I always go to places and I don't have a good plan. That's a that's a Denise sister Cheryl. I just don't have a good like New Orleans plan, so it's like that's I'm what she should have done. She should have started a, a business for people like you. Like, cause, I mean, I feel like. Like when I watch like Treme and all of that stuff, there's so much of New Orleans that I want to experience, but I don't know how to find it. And then like right. besides being on Bourbon Street, right, right, yeah. And it's like that's a one trick pony. Yes, I would like to go to New Orleans and eat, drink, like experience New Orleans from a. New Orleans perspective, not a tourist. You need to go to Gert Town. You know where Gert Town? No. That's where Xavier is. <laughs> oh, you mean go to, go behind the building. <laughs> I never forget, we drove past, she was like, it's right there. <laughs> hey, we was on the expressway, I was like, okay, let's do it again. Maybe I'll be <laughs> it's right there. Uh, <laughs> I missed it again. Let's do this one more time. One more time. No, I'm telling you, my cousin, I ain't my cousin, my sister-in-law, she always keeps herself uh, tied to what's happening in the city. Right, like I would love to go and go do to the zoo, like go to the Zulu thing or go to a dance, go to like pack properly. Yeah, see, so like in, in, um, in, what month is this, February? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in January, you would have gone, and you would have gone to, like, the Zulu Gala. Because all the kids That's my point. Their own thing. Yeah. And then go to the Gala, be dressed up, seat up, fancy, hootie falooties, go see it outside, go, you know. Yeah. Go do a third line. Bunt land. When I went to... Why don't you do a second, second line? Second line, I mean. <laughs> What's a third line? Nothing. A third line is what the drug dealers... Uh, when I need my political fix, I listen to the WVON Morning Show with Mays Jackson and Todd Stroger. It's effing golden. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Hey!
You are tuned in to the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, we taking I calls. Sonia listens to the show. Uh, Sonia listens to two. Yeah, she does <laughs> listen to the show. So, uh, Todd, Governor Rob Boyevich, react. Uh, good interview, bad interview. Thoughts on Rob? Do you think you can forgive him for saying your name? Because remember, I tried to check him, Todd. You know, I started. You was Look, you know, I was ready to start a fight, right? And then he's like, nah, that's okay. Now you got the little brother, and you be like, what's what they say? I'm coming outside. Let's go. What you want to say? And he was like, nah, that's okay. Well, you know, at this point, it's, that's 20 pounds ago. So. <laughs> he was kind of swole, though. He looked like he'd been working out. I was talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was lifting. He was eating. I was eating. <laughs> All right, let's go to the phone lines. Uh, let's go to Martha. Martha, you on the top of Chicago, 16. Hey, Mace. Hello, Mace and Todd. I got to talk fast. Phone's going out. Mm -hmm. I think the interview was powerfully great. I wanted to say that uh, this man saved a lot of life. He, the people that are saying that, he saved a lot of life. We will love him forever. We will love Reverend Jackson, and we love President Trump for exonerating him. I wish he, somebody would come up with an executive order that people, uh, politicians who have served one year or more come out, don't block them from serving again. Do not do that. Mm. That's all I want to say. We mm. love him. Thank you, Martha. See, I, I want y'all to keep talking because I, I, like, I just need for black folks to understand, black politicians, understand your people. It's not a whim for you to be jumping out there. It's yeah. just not a whim for black people to jump out against Robert Gordon. I'm just telling you that. So when, when dude be trying to tell y'all, go out there and get him, don't do it. Uh, let's go to Lewis. Lewis, you're on Talk Chicago 1690. Good morning, Maze. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Good morning Lewis. Uh, I'm... Uh, what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say that uh, I'm sorry for what he had went through and that he had to go through that time. Mm -hmm. But but our people, the Negro people, have to remember he's not our savior. I and agree with that, that. And that the only people, and, and like Dr. King said, the only people who can save the Negro people is the Negro people. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. I don't think we, I don't think anybody sees him as a savior. I don't. I see him as a political prisoner. Oh, sorry, case I see him as a Illinois, a victim of Illinois politics. And can I tell you, did you hear what he said? He said he was another version. He, did you hear what he called Mike Madigan? Go ahead, oh, say it. Oh, y'all remember that? Oh, uh, Todd, y'all remember he called him Bull Connor. Oh, he did. Right. He said that's a modern day Bull Connor. Yeah. So he's like, who's Bull Connor? I bet the seniors <laughs> listening know. Let's go to Michael O'Connor. Michael O'Connor, you on top of Chicago. Hey, good morning. That was morning. a great interview. Uh, Bull Connor, <laughs> for anybody that don't know, mm -hmm. was the, was the, was the sheriff who threw water, who ordered the water hose and the police to 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 violently stop black folk and dog, from yeah. their First Amendment right in terms of in Alabama. Uh, secondly, now let me just say this: um, it was a great interview. Rod Begorovich signed the very first second uh, um, um, second uh, second chance act thousands of mostly African Americans here in the state of Illinois have been helped by that law that was the law that was done in the basement of the Carter G. Woodson uh, library and it was my former Ball State Representative Connie Howard who shepherded that legislation too after four to five years where the Republicans would not deal with it. I, like you, Mays, was in a unique position to watch the Paul as far as the halls of power in Springfield. And I have a feeling that the Illinois Illuminati days are numbered. Mm. And Mike Madigan is, is not just Mike Madigan, but a lot of lobbyists Ooh, you tell are us shaking in their boots. They are. They are, Mike. And that's my comment. Thanks, Mike. Mike. Uh, let me go to Andre Smith. Andre, what's up, bro? Good morning, good morning, family. Only thing I can say is O M G. The G is back. <laughs> and that and that commercial y'all got with uh him saying that it's bleeping golden, man, that shoot into orbit, man. Y'all are on the map. Thank <laughs> y'all so much for bringing them in. Thank you, Andre. Oh, and remember, Governor McGorvich is the one that gave all the seniors free rides. Mm -hmm. they, they mad at they <laughs> Thanks, uh, Andre. He knew he and they remember that, too. They sure do. I mean, even well-to-do 
uh, seniors was like, uh, I give me a free, you better stop. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to Charles. Charles, you're in touch. Charles, 16. <coughs> hey, how y'all doing? All right. Hey. Last week, when Governor Blagojevich was released, there was also a elderly black man who was released from uh, prison. He had served 30 years in jail for a rape charge that he did not commit. There were no fans there for him. There were just two people surrounding him, just as lawyers, two white women. There was no salutations, no parades, no nothing for him. I guess we don't consider that a problem. I consider that a problem. Thank you, Charles. I'm going to tell you, like, I, I do remember uh, speaking on that situation uh, on the morning show. I do recall highlighting that situation. But again, you know, I don't think it has to be an either or. And I think that for the things that we do on this morning show, right? And this is really politically focused. You got to say, we're kind of politically focused on this morning show. Yeah. Um, I think that there are multiple stories, and I think that this is a continuation. In Illinois, it's a never-ending story of people being released from jail for crimes that they did not commit. Um, and I don't think that this story or this day minimizes this, but I also think that there is a tremendous amount of interest in this story, particularly with the background of things that are happening right now in Illinois politics. Um, Todd, I was nervous about this interview. You know why? Because mm -mm. I like Rock. Like, I liked him before, and I didn't want to be like, hey, I didn't want to fan out, even though, I'm telling you, you know, when you see somebody who helped you do well in business and told you, and, I mean, when you heard what he said, man, they had a way of doing things in Springfield. They had money, and it was all protected, and I broke it up, and I spread it around, and I moved stuff around. That joint was real. Right. right. That was real. And that created... I mean, I, I think about everything we're finding out right now, and I think about how outraged the white folks in Springfield are about Rob Bogoyevich, considering every, I mean, we have literally seen an email where they talk about covering up a rape. Yeah. Right? And the same people are, right, are going crazy about Rob getting out. After eight years. Eight years. Did you see Chicago uh, tonight, on Friday? No. I did not even. Uh, no. uh, well, you know, they had uh, all the kind of people who cover Springfield. Uh, and, man, they were all over them. They, they could see no value in him ever saying another word. I, and my point is this. And you got to ask yourself why. It's the same thing with the Bloomberg thing. See, they got, like, it's, a, it's an incestuous cabal, right, where they all thrive off of this thing that they do. And essentially, Rob wasn't playing that game. And he paid a price for not playing that game. I'm not saying that, I don't, I'm still not sure about the guilt and innocence and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But what I do know is that when he sat here and said there was a way that things got done in Springfield and people and lobbyists and everybody, I've been telling y'all about that for the last five years. He went to jail fighting. And I'm not saying he fought a righteous fight, but that's why he went to jail for so long, because mm -hmm. he was he was messing with the money. And when you mess with the money, that's when they willing to do whatever. Hey, y'all, this was a great day. Thank you to everybody who tuned in, especially all of our new viewers and listeners. So for Samantha Thomas in the newsroom, for Sonia Escobar, the news conductor of the Soul Plane, for my co-host, Todd Stroger, I am the host of the WVON Morning Show. Asking the question every day, what's in it for the black people? And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. Man, he said, we out of here. Peace. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. 16. Huh? Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope we gave you what you liked. Uh, and for the record, you can get a lot more in an hour than you can in 30 minutes, in, in six Right? See, I think all the other guys play for sound bites and clips.
right? So Anderson Cooper knew that he was going to do that because he was trying to create a viral moment, right? And he knows that if you whack Trump, all of the white folks are going to get b like bent out of shape and be like, oh yeah, that's terrible. But like, did you really want to, did you want to talk to Rod or did you want to yell at him? Yeah, well that's what he really wanted. He wanted to, to, he wanted to lecture him for his audience and downplay the other part. All right, y'all, it's the WVOM Morning Show. We up out of here. We sticking, y'all sticking with us 215 viewers right now? I guess that was a big get. That might have been our biggest show thus far. All right, y'all.